All right, everybody, what is up? Thank you so much for joining. It really means a lot. Give me just a couple of more minutes to set up. I'm bringing all my stuff in from the convention and trying to get all set up nice so the stream looks presentable. But we'll get started here probably within the next five minutes or so. I have a lot to talk about. And if you're in here waiting already, thank you so much. It means the world to us. We'll be here soon. Thank you for your patience. solo today so i don't have anybody here to help me with the switching and stuff i just want to make sure that we're up and streaming if y'all can hear me if y'all can see me shout me out in the chat and if you are here in the chat thank you so much for coming i'm running on pure caffeine right now so if i'm like really out of it or i don't make any sense tonight <laughs> Ta -da, i'm here Woo. awesome so let's shout out everybody that's in the chat here so far we got megadong like always thank you so much coming to all of our streams and checking out all our videos you have no idea how much i appreciate you coming through we have ty guy 3d welcome back and yeah you should be a member what happened there but hey you're still in super so thanks for showing everybody all those cool emotes that i made for everyone i don't think anyone else has seen those so uh yeah thanks for showing those and if you aren't in the chat right now that's totally cool no worries i just like to sit watch and listen i got plenty to talk about today uh hopefully you enjoyed the tunes too yo favine Oh, okay. So everybody in chat, if you guys don't know, Favine is a longtime friend of mine. Very, very super cool dude. We had this group back in the day called Radio Nihon, which was like a podcasting network for tokusatsu fans and more. And uh, yeah, that's how I started getting my name around other than cosplaying was talking on stuff with a specific show called Toku Talk. Uh, now there's been like 30 Toku Talk, but we were the original. Nobody will admit it, but uh, I have sweatshirts to prove it. I just don't have them here. Regardless... He is one of my favorite people on earth. He comes out to North Carolina every once in a while. And the next time he's in North Carolina, I'm probably going to give him the biggest hug in the world. And uh, yeah, dude, I miss you. I miss you so much. We need to catch up. It's been too long. Then who else we got in here? Takaiju, or is, it, is that Takaiju or Taka? Regardless, hey, thanks for coming in. I appreciate you. So we have a lot to talk about, but the first thing I need to do is I need to take a breather. I need to chill. I gotta put my machine back together because I have to put this back on. It just wouldn't fit in my car because of how thin tall it was. So I had to take the uh, spool holder off. As soon as that happens, we're gonna heat this up. We're gonna get this bed leveled and I'm gonna print some of the stuff that we had at the convention and show y'all what I did all weekend and talk about the event we went to. So if you guys don't know, the event we went to was uh, retcon in Cary, north carolina that started on friday and it went through to today um i reached out to them a few months ago and i was like hey uh i just started a new business i'm hoping that i could you know make some free stuff for your event in exchange for a couple badges and just you know just be able to hang out and a few people vouched for me and the convention got back to me and we worked out a deal where they would give me filaments specifically for their event and I used those and I also brought some of my own as well. And I made merch for their attendees. If they came through and I had it on the table, they were more than welcome to take it. And for some of them, I also made some custom goodies just because if they were under half an hour and they were willing to hang out for a little bit, I printed them some stuff. So, um, ooh, oh my God. Looking to do AZ, same fam. Favin, thank you so much. And I appreciate your support as always, my man. You're the best. Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing some crazy shit at AZ this year. If we're not 3D printing at the event, um, we'll probably try to do a mobile booth. That's something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I want to get a 
like like a solar panel set and just be able to bring one of my printers, whether it's this one or the, the Pro, and just walk around and print, make things for people and just, you know, network. Because I'm not gonna lie, that was some of the most fun I had in a long time was going to Retcon and doing exactly that. Uh, it wasn't a mobile booth, it was just a simple setup and like, my favorite thing I got to do about all this was uh, not only being able to be my usual charismatic self that won't shut the hell up, uh, I got to spend this event as the first one with my wife. Hey, so, uh, whoo, and it went super, super well. Hex, yo, thank you for coming in. Kevin, thank you so much for coming in, and thank you so much. I greatly appreciate all the well wishes we got over the weekend, too. Uh, I posted about it on Twitter, and it was like 900 people shared it around, but the thing that's blowing my mind is that now you can actually see how many people actually saw the post, even if they scrolled past it. 25,000 people are possibly aware that I got married, <laughs> and that's just like, I'm never doing anything personal like that again because I, I don't want that many people knowing. Like, like for, for a couple thousand, like, cool, whatever. But, like, uh, that number is unfathomable unfathomable for me when it comes to people. That's a lot of people. That's, like, a medium-sized convention. That's, like, a good medium-sized convention, too. Ooh, Lord. And respond to my DMs when you have it. Ooh, hey, uh, I'm really sorry. I forgot. I haven't used Line in a really, really long time, and I've been having issues with my phone. So, like, as soon as I'm done with the stream today, I will hit you back up, Kev. I'm really sorry it's been too long. Okay, honest questions. I have my CR10 smart bed about to ready to drill the threads out to put a manual bed level kit on it. Is it worth it? Oh, that's kind of scary. Uh, uh, drill out the threads to put a manual level kit on it. Mm, you know what? If you're having issues with your bed leveling, if your bed is bent, there's really nothing around that you can do other than like replace it. The next thing you want to worry about is that it, you might just need to continue cleaning it too. Some of these beds, like you really got to scrub to get whatever's on it off of it. And I highly recommend alcohol. And then if you need to, Blue stick's not a bad option. It'll help sometimes. But um, that's kind of a scary job. I've never heard of changing the, the bed like that. So Ty, if you need help with that, shoot me an email. Maybe hold off on that for a couple days. I don't want you to mess up your printer or do something that might change the way it works or operates on you. Um, the thing I would recommend is that if you could change out to a CR6 headpiece, like if you have a, a ribbon cable on your printer, that's, I think it's a 16 prong. If it matches the same, see if it's compatible with the CR6 extruder bed. If it is, I say try that first before you switch over because that's a tension bed leveler and that might help you more than you try and switch out your whole bed. All right. Also, I, I have to put this out there. Somebody recommended it to me and I, I want to say it was Mega Dong. If you're in the chat, man, I got something to share with you because it might be my new favorite. You told me to get the tamarind, the Arito. And, oh, 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 I almost dropped my soda. <laughs> it slipped out of my fingers. But yeah, if you were the one that recommended this, I don't know who it was in the chat, but somebody in the chat recommended I tried this. I have tried it and it's really damn good. That's so I got a bigger one. <laughs> I'm gonna take a quick sit, swig, and then we're gonna talk about the wedding, and then we'll move on to retcon, okay? Mm. Yo, the best way I can describe this is like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like carbonated black tea with a hint of orange or just some kind of citrus, and I love it. It's so damn good. So, thank you. This has been my new favorite recently. It's a very good mixer, too. All right, I'm gonna hold the helmet off real quick. Thank you, Mega Dong. It is, it's become my new thing. I think I shouted, I was like, oh, hey, Mega Dong had that. And like, told me about it. And there was like an old lady next to me in the grocery store when I said it. And Katie, she's just like looking at me. She goes, you really need to be careful about what you say. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, I got another story similar to that. And I'll tell you all a little bit later. It's, it's part, partly with the wedding, promise. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna clip this on to me. I'm gonna talk about wedding stuff and start working on this. Whew. Also, I hope the audio quality is better, uh, but the mic is coming through the camera this time, not through my computer. I think my computer has too much stuff plugged into it and it just causes some static. So if it sounds better, uh, I did it for you. <laughs> All right, so the wedding. So I got married uh, about a week and three, two or three days ago. And we had a wonderful 
ceremony out in High Point, North Carolina. Um, beautiful location, a lot nicer than Raleigh and like just generally nicer, like people were really chill. It was super nice. And just, just so you guys know, if you go jump into all my content on the website, or not on the website, but here on the channel, um, I actually streamed some of the wedding for y'all. So if you guys want to see the ceremony itself, or if you want to see me and my wife grooving to our uh, reception party, y'all can go check that out over on the channel right now. Well, not right now, wait till after, but you, you know what I'm saying. Anyways. We were out there and in, in High Point Greensboro area, people were super chill, people were being very nice. We weren't even telling we were getting married, it was just, just generally people were nicer and I, that, was, that was a nice change of pace. It's been a while since I've been around that many people who were just generally chill, you know? So uh, my father-in-law now, uh, Steve, he used to go to UNCG, which is there in Greensboro, and he wanted to show us some of the stuff that he used to you know, do when he was a student there, which is pretty cool. I figured, you yeah, know, I'll, I'll go for like a little while, but I had other work I was trying to do, trying to make sure that y'all can still be a part of the wedding and then also be planning all my own stuff that's private. Anyways, uh, for some context, uh, Katie, Steve, and Nathan, my brother-in-law, they all lived near this hot dog place in Wilson called Dick's Hot Dogs. It's been around for 102 years, and I've eaten over there a couple times. Pretty good place. I, I like Dick's Hot Dogs. It's a good spot. If you ever in Wilson, go check it out. It's totally worth your time. The crinkle fries are super good, and so are the hot dogs. Anyways, Steve always was saying how Dick's Hot Dogs reminded him of Yum Yum in Greensboro, and we were always like, what the hell is Yum Yum? Well, he finally took us there, and it's essentially a place like Dick's Hot Dogs, but it's all about, you know, ice cream and the hot dogs and cheer wine. I had a bunch of cheer wine. And if you don't know, I can't have high fructose corn syrup. It murders my stomach. So yeah, we went over to, oh gosh. We went over to Yum Yum. They gave us uh, like a, a cane sugar soda versions of like everything they had in there. And I damn near cried because cheer wine so damn good. I love cheer wine. Can't have high fructose stuff, so cane sugar is my way to go. I got to have the hot dogs. It was great. But leading up into going there, there was an aroma in the air where it's like obviously hot dogs and grilled food and all that stuff, right? And I remember them telling me it's kind of like Dick's hot dogs. So my dumbass comes walking up to the restaurant and I see the sign for Yum Yum and I'm like, oh, huh, it smells like Dick's out here. in front of God and everybody because classes had just let out and it's that point where everyone's out there and interchanged and I got some looks and I'm just like, ha. Huh. And uh, yeah, we went in there, I was super embarrassed, but I got my soda and I got my hot dog and my ice cream and I was being a fat American and I was happy about it. And uh, yeah, so if you know anybody that either works at Dick's Hot Dogs in Wilson or Yum Yum in Greensboro, uh, hi, I like both of y'all's restaurants. They were good hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's take a quick look, see who's in the chat real quick, and then we'll go back on to some wedding stories. Sekai no Hakaisha cosplay. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Yo, I haven't seen you in a long ass time. I hope you're doing good. Uh, Lord, I miss cheer wine. Yo, Pavine, if you want some, I'll make sure I get you the good, good stuff. Shout out to Gokai Orange. Yeah, that is uh, my brother-in-law, that's uh, Nathan. And then Lady Kit Katie's in there. Hey, there's the wife, the wife's in there. Everyone say hello wife. Oh, or say hi, Mrs. Beetle, because that's what I've been calling her the last couple weeks. Her last week and a half, not couple weeks, hasn't been that long yet. Anyways, let me continue to turn this bad boy on. Oh, let me get the printer out, the card out first. For some reason, when I've been using these recently, it wants to do a uh, firmware update from the card first which I think is a really, really cool feature, but it's been a really annoying feature because I've been just trying to print stuff all weekend. So anytime I had to pull out the SD card and put it back in, I had to make sure I, the machine was on first. Or else I would try the firmware update, which I'm gonna allow it to do after the stream's over and I've put it back in its usual place. It's just right now, it's just, you know, it's got to be right here because I want to show you all some stuff that I made this weekend. So let's continue talking about the wedding. So, Katie and I got married out in High Point, but more specifically at a place called Castle McCulloch. 
and it's a castle that's partially built out here in North Carolina, and it's a pretty, pretty cool spot. It's really, really nice. Um, I, I do have some complaints with how the whole thing went overall, but it, it's really strange because I feel really 50-50 about it because the things that could have gone really, really, really damn well did go super damn well, but there's some things where it's like, I feel like either I miscommunicated, maybe Katie miscommunicated, or maybe the people that we were working with just didn't understand what we we're trying to go for. But I really feel like we got rushed out. I feel like our guests didn't get enough time to eat and then also a party. And we we kind of made the ceremony short and sweet so it could be, you know, something simple for me and her. And it feels like we didn't get to have the rest of that party part and I was kind of bummed out about it. So. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is, because the, the castle does events too, they've actually asked me to come out and do some stuff for them, which is super, super cool. And again, if you wanna see some of the wedding and the reception, you can go hit the channel right now, we have it up there. Um, it's just not gonna be recommended, so you gotta go look for it. A anyways, the castle asked me to come do some stuff for their events, so what I think I'm gonna ask is that um, I'll do a few events and then see if we can't get the venue again for at a reduced rate for a larger first anniversary party because we love the area. The area is really, really cool. We're even considering looking out there to move possibly and um, nothing against Raleigh. No, a lot of things against Raleigh actually. I've been having a really hard time here. I've been living in Raleigh for 20 years and it's, I don't feel like I've ever fit in anywhere around here and the only thing I've had is just some kind of form of contempt for it and the few things I do enjoy are disappearing. And what I'm noticing is that Greensboro and the High Point area both, while they're not like the space like Raleigh is and like easy to get around because I know it, uh, they're filled with art places and more people that are working on things that are similar to what I do. So I'm considering moving out that way. Um, it's still up in the air. We haven't decided yet. We aren't going to be making any moves till way later this year, even if we do make any moves. But uh, if we do make any of the changes, we'll let you all know. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take a quick look and see what's going on in the chat and then we'll continue on with some more wedding stories. Hey dude, sorry I missed the wedding. Hey Katie, hope you're doing well nowadays, hanging in there mentally, but getting ready for Japan in a few weeks. Oh, hey! So, you let me know when you are gonna be out there because if you're out there and I'm out there and you might be in like the West Tokyo area, I'd totally be down to show you some cool shit, dude. Some really, really cool shit. And then we can share some tips and then I can help you meet some of my Japanese cosplay buddies. Um, you let me know. And then even if like you go before me or after me, I'll still try to get you in contact with some really, really damn good people. Hit me up on my email, Dustin at the next decade.co. All right. So um, overall, the whole wedding experience was great. Uh, I got to have a couple shout outs for some people. Um, to the maid of honor, Melissa. Like, Melissa, you're the best. Thank you for doing everything you did for me and Katie and filling in for Eric. Eric's my best man, but he wasn't gonna be able to make it there until like a few hours just before the event. He had his own thing going on too. It was a, a earlier engagement thing, I understand. But uh, Melissa stepped up so she was able to help both of us at the same time. So she, she did double duty and thank you. And Caitlin too, and Deanna as well. Y'all were great. Thank you so much. And all uh, Christian and TJ, and then poor Tommy. Okay, so my friend Tommy, he was going to be one of our, our groomsmen, and he like he went through a porch and hurt his back, apparently, or, or something like that. Um, and Tommy, if you're seeing this, hope you're feeling better, dude. Um, and yeah, he was telling me like the morning of, and I was just like, oof, that's a valid excuse, damn. Uh, but all things considered, like I'm, I'm glad he's okay. Um, another big shout out to Alvin, my buddy Alvin, who just celebrated his birthday, and now he's out in Thailand. And if you're out there, tell everyone I said Sawadee Kop, Kupun Kup. Miss all of them, I hope they're doing well. Uh, Alvin was our DJ and he absolutely crushed it. While uh, he had to like work on the fly to make things happen and he didn't go, get to go through quite a full set, he brought glow sticks, he had lights. It was a really damn good set because he went for music that everyone like my family would know and her family would know and all the other normies would know. And then he also brought in some Toku stuff. And if you go listen to the reception, you can hear some of it and you can also hear some of the songs he picked for the wedding. Um, there's a clipped version of the wedding where you get the big, big main focus part. And then you have another one where it's like the full version. Um, I will say there's a headphone warning in the wedding video specifically. As soon as me and Katie walk away from the altar and we're off screen, cut your audio because there's a horrible screech. And that's not Alvin's fault. That was actually the fault of the uh, place there because their mic system picked up on his mic system. It was a whole mess. 
But uh, I absolutely, yeah, the next decade played. <laughs> and I didn't have to pay Gact any money. I'll be in Tokyo between March 17th and 24th with the fam, but I'm networking with your buddies too. Yeah, dude, definitely. We should totally meet up. We're, we're going to be there around the same time. So uh, you let me know. I want you to meet my friend, AG. He's really, really cool. And if you have time, um, I'm, I might be going up to Mount Iwafune again. And then we're going to try to also hit Ishinomaki. If you're up for either of those, you're welcome to join us. They're very cool experiences. And I'll introduce you to people too. So yeah, just, just hit me up on the email, man. I got you. Okay, Hex says, I'm really glad those flowers got to you. Also, apparently it's a good thing I didn't get to go down. Apparently I contracted COVID last week. Oh man, that's a bummer. But you know, the flowers you sent us were gorgeous. Thank you so much. And the card on the front made my absolute night. Well, getting married made my night, but that, you know, it was up there. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> I thought Gak was going to appear as the guest of honor. No. Um, so my godfather's Tim Allen, and he was going to show up. But the only reason why we asked him to show up was because of damn uh, uh, Matt Watson from Super Mega. And he... we. So here's the thing. They said that Super Mega said they would show up if Buzz Lightyear was there. So, like, I never bothered him. But this is, like, the one time in my life where I actually did. And I was like, hey, if you have the time, can you? And he's like, yeah, just let me know. And if it's, like, not going to happen, then, like... I'll just stay home. And it was cool. And then Matt Watson Barry apparently blew us off after multiple attempts of telling him, yo, Buzz Lightyear will be there. And he... that's OK. I just want to make something really clear about those two uh, YouTubers from Super Mega, Matt Watson and Ryan McGee. Out of the two of them, that Ryan McGee guy is by far the cooler motherfucker. Look at this hoodie. It's immaculate. It's perfect. I've been wearing this in the shorts like nonstop. Like he gets my style. So like Ryan McGee, we're still cool. I love you, Ryan. Things are fine. But Matt Watson, you a hoe. Anyways. Sorry I dropped this, Ryan. It's really nice. And if you haven't checked out Super Mega, if you're like older than 15, go check them out. They're really cool. I like, I like Super Mega, they're very funny. Um, all right. Hey, dude, congrats on you and Katie getting married. How are things? Hey, Manta doing very well. Uh, things have been crazy stressful just because we, as soon as we got done with the wedding and having our, our wonderful reception and hanging out with so many people that we missed, uh, we got all our stuff packed up, we came back home. We took a day or two to ourselves, and then uh, I realized, oh my God, I have a convention this weekend. <laughs> ah. So I knew this was coming up, but I, again, I, I talked to the retcon people like months before any of this, and they got back to me like just before the wedding. And I was like, all right, cool. So I designed like a coin based off of one of their designs they'd already previously given me. And then I made a ring that was a strip of plastic that would print out the strip of plastic, then put the name on top. And then I would heat that and form that over shape. And then I also did like a, a character cutout of one of their, of a, uh... oh God, it was CRT or something like that. Crit, the name of the character is called Crit. He's like a, a TV head person and they look cool. And then, uh, oh wait, here, that's what they look like. They're this guy right here on this uh, koozie. Speaking of, this is the second koozie I've ever owned. And I've been living in North Carolina for 20 years. So uh, the other one I got was from Pressbet and that was earlier this year. So. Apparently I'm becoming a koozie perfect person. Has the South finally adopted me? I guess so. And then uh, on top of that too, there's also acrylic pin they gave me and a few stickers. They were, they were very hospitable. Um, so yeah, retcon was like right around the corner. I scrambled to get a bunch of stuff together. And then, uh, yeah, it was the night before and I decided to go hang out with my buddy Duran and his wife, Tiffany. <laughs> um, I had a really good time with uh, those two the night before. They were also at the wedding and they were people I wanted to talk with more and I didn't get a lot of time to. So, uh, hey, Deron and Tiff, if you're watching this, let's hang out again soon. Y'all are the best. Anyways, um, let's get this heated up so we can start doing some of the, start demoing some of the stuff I made this weekend for uh, people at Retcon. So let's talk about just the event in general. So it was in, it was in Cary. And the morning of, we got everything we could. We even considered bringing a TV. We actually have a TV over there. And we were gonna bring our PlayStation and a few of the, uh, the Tokusatsu DVDs I have, or Blu-rays I have. So we could show that and also like do our thing, maybe give some people more context for some of the costumes and prints I had sitting out. And uh, turns out we only had two plugs. So we, we kind of scrapped our ideas of streaming and also putting the PlayStation out. 
and we just focus on making sure the printers are up and running and we can consistently work. Um, we also brought a laptop with us that had all of my stuff to model. So when I was there, if people had something that was small, excuse me, if they had something small and easy to work with, um, I would model it right there on the spot and I'd get it set and we would prototype. And I had a lot of fun doing that for quite a few people this weekend. Um, the big thing that excited me the most about this was how many young people were interested in this stuff because they know what it is, but so many of them have been like, I've only seen it like on YouTube before or 3D Printing Nerd or, 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 or you know, all those different guys on YouTube and stuff. And um, it was a lot of fun talking to parents and seeing them be like, oh, I get it now. Like their kid talks about it all the time, but because their parent hasn't seen it before. It just kind of like, might as well be them talking about Pokemon Gen 42. And this person's only aware of like generation two or one, you know what I mean? Anyways, um, so I had a lot of fun explaining this, showing this off to people and then handing out the retcon coins. Now these are demos that are still here. All of my other ones are gone. We're gonna try to make a couple of them here in a second, just so you guys can get an idea of what we were doing. But we're handing out the coins, we're handing out rings that I would heat form and put them in multiple sizes for people. I'll do that demo here in a minute too. And um, it was just, it was a fun time. I got to network with a lot of people. The staff was extremely welcoming, extremely accommodating. The guests were also super interesting and they would come out of the way to come hang out with me. Um, there's one in particular, Alan Wold. He's a, uh, he's an author and his daughter was also there too. And she is his cover artist. And then his wife was also there as well. I'm unsure if she does stuff with them, but if they do, cool. Um, Alan is a author who's done a bunch of sci-fi books. So if you're somebody who likes to read a lot of stuff, go check out his website. It's alan-wold.com. I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, Matt Watson, more like Matt Watt daughter. Oh, got him. Ooh. Oh yeah, the, the, the Shin Kamen Rider outfit. I was gonna show you all that. Damn. All right, we'll talk. We'll we'll do the rider suit last. Okay. So y'all stick around with me. I promise we'll talk about the rider suit soon. It's it's some neat stuff. Here, I'll put the helmet back up so y'all can look at it while I'm uh, getting the printer all set up. Here. There you go. Keep you can keep looking at it for a little while. All right. So I'm gonna level the bed on this real quick, and then we'll get started on printing. So. Yeah, Redcon was probably one of the most fun weekends I'd had, and it was just purely because I was doing work stuff. And even when I had moments to get up and walk around to do stuff and talk with other people, um, the focus was making sure that everything I did for the group was like really fun stuff, being extremely accommodating back to the people that let me have the space and the badges, and then like just, just trying to do everything and anything I can to make sure that not only the attendees and the guests are having a good time, but the staff too. And like smaller conventions, that's usually what happens. But sometimes it can be a nightmare and this went so, so, so smooth. And the fact that I was able to help people make some of their stuff like physical items other than like a 2D print, seeing them light up really made my day. Seeing all these kids getting into it really made my day. And some opportunities popped up to where I might be able to go do a career day at a couple schools here in Wake County. And I'm really excited about that. Um, one of the, the staff members was a, um, one of the staff members was a counselor for a couple schools, or one of those schools. So she threw that out there like, hey, you wanna do a career day? I saw how you were acting and working with the kids and like they were really getting it and understanding. And I was just like, woo. Another fun thing I get to do where I get to show people 3D printing, but also maybe get to show them some of the stuff I love, like I'm a writer and cosplay stuff. It's neat. Okay. So if, you're hearing me now. Go check out Retcon. That's ret with a hyphen con. And it's dot org. Ret hyphen con dot org. And if they have a thing up for badges for year two, jump on them sooner than later because uh, it sounds like we're going to have the same amount of space next year. And this year was a sweet spot. I feel like if we get double the amount of people that we had this year, it might feel like we need to get more space. And I'd love for them to get more space because the Embassy Suites they were at was gorgeous. It was a good, good hotel and a great venue for. The event. Uh, my only complaint is I wish I had four power outlets, not two, but that's okay. We were still able to do what we wanted to do, and I still feel like we impressed the hell out of a lot of people. We were able to show them 3D printing in not just the uh, FDM style, but resin print. I wasn't able to do resin prints there, but I was able to show off some of the resin prints we've done, and people 
really were receptive of that. It was great. Oh, yeah, it was a good time. Damn good time. Um, also, I'm, I'm keeping this one because the pin on it's really cool, but that's my first time with a dealer's thing on it. And even though I wasn't technically a dealer, I wasn't selling anything, I was giving away free stuff. I still was able to make some things for other people uh, and also make some other opportunities pop up. Like there was one gentleman that talked to me about possibly doing some custom Super Nintendo controllers that would match his computer. And I am super about that. That sounds like a lot of fun and totally up my alley. And then I had another person that was interested in hunting. And this is one thing I think is neat and why I wouldn't want to do 3D printing is that I wanted to get it out to more people that usually wouldn't use it. And I met this guy, uh, JD. And JD is trying to get more 3D printed stuff for their a hunting situation and if you don't know in North Carolina we're a hunting state but not in the kind where it's like yeah 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 get, 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 get. it's like actually hunting because we have deer population problems in some parts of the state and when I say population problems I mean like a whole pack will run in front of a bunch of cars and cause a car accident because they're not trying to hit the deer so JD's doing their part anyways JD wanted some parts for a um it's like a saddle hook kind of thing it's not for like saddles like like riding a horse but for hooking onto a tree and I was able to design and print their part in a less than half an hour. And they're going to prototype that and see if the prototype like works. And if it works, great. If not, I'm going to tweak it. And hopefully I'll be able to help them get some more of those clips for a lot cheaper because sometimes those clips can go upwards of $30 after shipping, which is like ridiculous because I printed it for three cents. Like, ugh. you know what I'm saying? But that's also the fun of it. I got to show all these people all these different ways you can do stuff with 3D printing. And y'all know the recreator that Josh Taylor made, the bottle recycler? People love that. They absolutely love that. And I'm glad they loved it because I had a lot of fun breaking up two bottles and turning them both into 50, or yeah, 50 feet of usable filament. And we're gonna be printing some PETG stuff here really, really, really soon. I'm gonna show y'all how to print with the actual PETG and then also with the recreator PETG because it's a little bit different with the recreator stuff. Whew. Yeah, I'm getting another sip. I'm thirsty. How y'all doing? How was y'all always all y'all's week? I want to stream more and I just I didn't have time for it. Understandably so. Mm. Oh my goodness. Ugh. It's also kind of neat because this weekend um I got to spend time with not just my wife, but my mom and my brother-in-law and a bunch of new people. So like, if any of y'all are watching right now, if you were at Retcon, like y'all were super, super cool. Oh, oh gosh, his name's escaping me right now, but I had a great, I think, I wanna say his name was, I wanna say it was Josh. If I'm wrong, I'm so sorry. I, I think it's Josh and Diane. There are two people that I met at the convention. They are also into tokusatsu stuff. And like, I'm glad we were able to connect and talk about it. Um, and again, if I'm getting your name wrong, dude, I'm so sorry. Hit me up on the email though. I want to talk more. Um, we were sharing some, they work for the event and like, I'm going to be making Diane the, the headpiece, the character piece from Retcon. Uh, print is what they're calling it. It's supposed to be like a CRT, but faster. Yeah, I'm going to be working on that for them. And then, um, he and I, I want to talk more Tokusatsu stuff with him because he seems like he's about it and he's been all about Sentai recently and I've been hyping the hell out of Don Brothers. And speaking of Don Brothers, if you saw the ending, I'm super, super jealous. Hopefully I'll be able to watch it here soon. I'm just sad it's go over because Don Bros was quite possibly one of my favorite Super Sentai series. That shit was fun. Uh, then there was another guy, I cannot remember his name, but I do remember he had a panel I thought was a lot of fun because I got to check it out. Yeah, it was on Saturday at one. It was the history of Saban. So whoever ran that panel, they had their information and it was really, really cool because it was more than just a Mighty Morphin Power Ranger starting in 1993. No, this guy was going into it and he was even going so far back to talk about how uh, Saban had some help with the Dragon Ball Z series, Samurai Pizza Cats, like really going back there. And it was a lot of fun to see that. It was cool to see somebody that talked more than just Power Rangers when talking about Saban. Because like, if you guys know me, I've talked plenty of crap about Saban and I'm not trying to like completely crap on everything there because admittedly, some of the stuff they did made it to where half of these things we're watching now are even possible here in the States. So credit where credit's due and whoever ran that History of Saban panel knew what the hell they were talking about. Good on you. I translated it for an indie toku film a few weeks ago. That's my biggest recent highlight. Yo, that is really cool, Kevin. 
Uh, I might have some help, might need your help translating a couple things. I'm sending some stuff out before I head out to Japan. So when I DM you later, if not tonight, definitely tomorrow. It just depends on what happens because I might end up crashing really hard after this. I've been pooped all weekend. All right, printer's up and running. I'm gonna go start printing some stuff. Give me two seconds to grab some filament and we'll start demoing what we did this weekend. All right. Here, you know what? We're gonna do two colors. We're gonna do pink and green. We'll do, uh, maybe should I do trans, oh wait, no, no, no. Let's do transparents first. Transparents look cooler first. So the convention was super cool and they got me a couple spools of protopasta. And this is one of the colors they gave me. They also gave me one that was a, um, is a purple pearlescent stuff. I'm really, really, really happy with this one. It looks gorgeous. But um, we're gonna put this down first and we're gonna do some rings. And I'm gonna show you all how I made those because those are a little bit more height maintenance than the coins. So I gotta really make sure I pay attention to the rings when we're printing these. Plus that way when they're done, I'll not have to worry about doing them again. At least not till next year. Okay. And let's start the print. SD card's gotta go back in. All right. Uh oh, they're not on this one. Two seconds. I'm gonna take the SD card from the smaller printer I have over here. That'll have the information we need on it. And thank God for the uh, Neptune Plus for understanding of what the difference is between the two. It still prints it. It's nice. Okay. Let's see. Red ring six. Confirm. So, let me get the red filament out of this before it starts printing. Oh no. All right, there we go. Get this so I can pull this away. So again, we printed rings, coins, and a bookmark too. The bookmark I did for staff specifically. And um, it's a UFO at the top with a tractor beam coming out and it says retcon on the inside and has one of those page flaps on it. And uh, people seem to really enjoy those. But everything we did was just really simple, small, thin layer stuff. And on occasion, we did a few things that were like uh, statues. Like, you know those Kerbos I've been using? Here, I got one that's right over here. Ugh. These guys, I've been using them to sample all my pieces. Uh, I made a couple special versions of these. I'll be uploading those to printables here pretty soon. Speaking of printables, I have a bunch of stuff I've been meaning to upload there. I've just been so busy with so many things. Um, I think tomorrow I might make a day where I just focus on getting things, you know, out. Like, 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 like posting things I mean and emails and things like that. Like I need an office day where I'm not doing anything other than just replying to people. I feel like I'm behind. Um, where, where am I even going? What the hell am I talking about? I'm sorry, y'all. Like I said, I, I've been like on all weekend and I'm running on pure caffeine. Let's check the chat again. I got accepted to my dream college very recently. So that's some good news. Hell yeah, Manta. Good for you, Alex. That's rad. Good for you, man. And then Sherman says, congrats again on the wedding and suit, man. And for a highlight, finish my skin. Shin Kamen Rider gloves at the cost of burnt fingers from blue. Sorry about hearing you burnt your fingers. That sucks. Um, back when I used to use hot glue a lot, one of the things that used to work for me was a little bit of toothpaste, specifically a minty toothpaste. Just rub it between your fingers. Like, don't do a lot. Do a very small amount and then wash your hands. Sometimes the, the menthol in some of those will help the burns not hurt as bad. Do not do a lot. Please don't do a lot. You might hurt yourself. And you know what else you should do? Not listen to a stupid YouTuber. So like, use your best judgment. Maybe not listen to this dummy. The other thing you can also do is aloe vera. If you have anything with some aloe vera, that might help. But yeah, if it gets really bad and it hurts really bad and like, you don't want to put that stuff on there, I'd still consult the doctor. Maybe find some burn gel. Take care of yourself, Sherman. I don't want you to hurt yourself. Mm. But definitely send me those gloves. I want to see what they look like. Ah. So while this is printing, 
I'm gonna go over everything about the Shin Kamen Rider outfit since y'all have been so patient. So I'm gonna walk over first and we're gonna do the helmet. Let me also speed up the print just a little bit. I know a specific point I need to pay attention to it, so hopefully this shouldn't be a problem. Um, settings, print, speed. I always jump it up 133. All right, so this is my Shin Kamen Rider helmet. My helmet and chest piece was made by Wrap Product 3D. These are his 3D models. I printed and put it together. Um, the belt was modeled by me. You can go pick that up on my website or over on Etsy. The helmet is made with the Elegoon Neptune 3 Plus, this larger printer right here. And I actually printed it upside down. So I printed it this way, and the jaw piece is separate. But magnetized. He even, Rap was really cool. He put these magnet beds in there to make this easier for other cosplayers. And I, I can't tell you how much this helped. This was awesome. Um, on the inside of the helmet, I put a strip of foam at the top so it sit on my eyes just right. But if you look at the sides, I actually left supports right here, right here, and right down here. Hmm. Reminder, no more sodas when I stream. Ugh. Anyways, the eyepieces were vacuformed, the outside layer, and the inside layer was a resin print. And that resin print also was the thing I used as the buck for my vacuum forming pieces. Um, and then the eyes, my Hobart face shield. If you ever are looking for like the best plastic for a durable Sentai visor or just any kind of like plastic black visor, instead of going with the thin stuff or drilling holes into your thing, I highly recommend a Hobart face shield. Uh, they come in smoke. That's the color you're looking for particularly is smoke. Um, these antennas were printed in PLA, just the same as the rest of it was. I was using uh, Elegoo's PLA. I also used uh, Bondo spray primer. It's relatively new. It's a really damn good primer. I highly recommend it. I also recommend before you're using it, shake it up really, really good and give it a nice warm bath. And also make sure before anything else, you clean up your nozzle. Um, it will gum up and have another layer of like clear stuff over the top of it. So after you're done spraying with that Bondo, flip it upside down and spray two or three times so you see nothing coming out, but don't spray it like so much that like you're releasing a bunch of gas, just enough to get the, the chamber cleared. And then as soon as you had that done, flip it back over, cap it. Uh, after I got done with that, I used a combination of acetone and what's, what's it called? Um, glazing or spot putty. I mixed them together and I covered it with a brush, a really thin layer all over it. And then I went um, 120, 220, 320, 400, 600 sandpaper grits. And I was able to get rid of some of the really nasty detail on the top from the way that the print oriented. Uh, and yeah, it, it came out great. I ended up spraying it with some Montana Gold spray paint. Uh, if you don't know, Montana Gold is some of the best spray paints for like uh, graffiti mostly, or outdoor spray paint art, that kind of stuff. So I figured it would be a really good, durable paint other than uh, automotive paint. And the reason why I love it is that most of their paints are matte. And uh, for Sakura Jimmy Ichigo, I really want to use a matte paint because going glossy sometimes it doesn't look great. Sometimes it looks good, not all the time though. And yeah, I was really happy with how this part came out. But next, we're going to talk about the chest piece, okay? Ugh, I'm gonna set the helmet down over here. Let's talk about the chest. So, here, I'm gonna throw this on so you can see everything on me a little bit better. Oof. I'm gonna get really hot really fast. It's not gonna be great, but. This has some really cool stuff in it that I'm like excited as hell to share with y'all. I'm gonna put you all a little bit higher. Hopefully you won't smack into anything. Sorry if the mic sounds weird. So. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Ooh, okay. So, uh, these are the chest pieces. These were made by Rat Product 3D. Again, just the same as the helmet. Uh, we did a trade where I gave him my belt model and he let me prototype with these. So these aren't complete versions. I'm not sure when he's gonna be releasing the full version, but when he does, I'll be sure to let everybody know because these were awesome. These are actually two parts. So there's the upper pec 
part of the lung and then the lower pec, uh, abdominal parts of the lung. Now, I'm gonna show you all my secret. This is flexible because these are two separate pieces, right? If I stretch, you get a good view in there. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it. I'm sorry if I'm flipping you all off, but see that strip of elastic that's in there right in the middle? That stretchy piece right there? If you'll go back and look at my shorts on YouTube, I showed y'all how to do this. Do you remember the beetle bond? That thing where I took a sheet of plastic and then I took, a two, or I took two strips of plastic and I stretched my elastic over it and then I did two more strips and it made those two bits of uh, plastic at the end of the elastic. I glued those in uh, at the bottom of this part and at the top of this part, held it together just long enough to where they were together really, really nicely. And yeah, it, it just... <laughs> It bonded really good, the two parts stayed together and I was able to paint them all at the same time and it, it came out super, super cool. All right. Here, I'm gonna switch you guys back over to this. Hopefully it's not too annoying. And again, if the audio has been bunk, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk to y'all about is how I attach this. So, oh, oh, before I talk about how I attach this, uh, this, jacket is used with some of the fam same fabric I got with the last jacket I got. So uh, I bought a suit from Uncle Hulk and they were able to put this together for me with a pleather and like showed me how to do it, which is super, super cool. And then they sent me a bolt of the fabric. So I was able to make my own jacket. So this is a fresh one and I was able to put my own stuff on it. So the one that I have the original Ichigo colors on, that was from Uncle Hulk and thank those guys so much. They're super helpful. They do other rider suits too. And uh, if you ask really nicely, they'll share how they do it. And I, I've never been good at making my own bodysuits or stuff like that. So like, I, I really own for this. And uh, I'm gonna try to turn this into a cotton, maybe polyester fabric eventually, because this is good for like cold winter conventions, but it gets really, really hot too fast. I need something that's more like that jersey material, like uh, the, the later versions of uh, the rider suits look like. Now I don't blame them for getting off of leather because like, holy crap, those, these things are really, really hot. I can't imagine what the suit actors went through, especially in the Japanese summers, what the fuck? Uh, anyways, so attaching. This is where it gets kind of fun. I used hot glue with these, which usually isn't recommended, but if you get it hot enough, it will bond with the plastic. It just really depends on how hot you go. So I went super, super hot and I put uh, EVA foam bricks behind a lot of this. So there's some padding of EVA foam back here, but I used a material that I never thought would work and it's worked it's worked so damn good. It's worked super, super, super good. I can't wait to show you this. So I can't really peel it up, but I can show you the material. It's from 3M and it is this, it's this two-sided sticky foam tape. Now I bought this to use with my CNC cutter. And what I use it for is I put it down on the back of wood so I don't have to use clamps because I don't have a lot of clamps and my table isn't really accommodating for clamps on that CNC machine. So I take this and I put it on there and it can hold uh, from one strip 30 pounds and two strips up to 60 pounds. Like the more strips you put on there and essentially the stronger the bond is. And it works really good on slick surfaces and foam pore surfaces. Do you see where I'm going with this? So the jacket is made with a slick material. The foam on the back of these chest piece parts are made with that porous material. I just lined it and then lined them up and smashed them on me as tight as I could. And I started sweating like an absolute animal and I was still able to walk around with this and have enough fall off. And it's just, just good enough to bend in the right ways where you don't really like see like, ooh, it's nice. My previous version, here, I'll grab that real quick. The one I used for my 1972 Sakurajima Ichigo. Uh, this one right here. It uses magnets on the inside. And these, they worked and it was great for readjusting, but I'm about to completely redo this jacket and these pads with the with this two-sided sticky foam tape. I picked this up at Lowe's. You can probably also get it at Home Depot. There's a white version. And I, I gotta mention some stuff about the, the white version of it too. It's a lighter version that is 15 pounds. So if this one does 30, that one does 15. So it's it's this less strong version. Uh, still completely strong stuff. Super, super strong stuff. Um, two examples. First one I'm gonna show you right here. Uh, some of the residue is stuck at the top of my printer from something I displayed on my printer this weekend. So I'm gonna have fun scraping that off later, woohoo. Um, and then the next part that I used it on was the belt. 
one moment while I grab that. Okay. So again, I modeled this belt. You can pick it up on Etsy or on my website right now. I had a lot of fun modeling this and I'm really proud of it. It's my first model I ever put out for sale. Super, super proud of it. Anyways, um, the way I made this was I got these leather straps and they were really thin. I ordered them on Amazon thinking they were gonna be like an eighth of an inch thick and no, they were like barely a 16th of an inch thick. So maybe two millimeters thick, it was, it was rough. Um, so what I ended up doing was buying two sets of them and using that double-sided sticky tape, the clear, or the, the white stuff. So I'm gonna try to get in here really good. You can see it's two pieces of leather sandwiched right here. Two pieces of leather sandwiched with the um, double-sided sticky foam tape. And like I said, it worked really good bonding um, on the back too, because I ended up using a couple thin strips that go straight down the middle of all this to hold it to the belt. Um, now these clips were actually hot glued on the inside part and they were slotted onto the belt before it was added to the uh, bigger thick black belt part. So if you look really closely, not all of them are glued down and that was purely for comfort and also being able to readjust this belt and resize it because I made it to where you can readjust it. Uh, now, attaching all of the side modules and uh, the front buckle turbine part, what I ended up doing for that was uh, two processes. You can't see all of it on here, but this is kind of an example of what I did on the first strip. Uh, the first strip has the same thing on the middle and the two outside halves of it, where there's a washer touching against the part right here, and then the uh, part under it is sandwiched with another washer and then the screw gets pushed through so all the pressure is coming from the washers not from the screw the screw is just holding the part so all the pressure is being transferred through the foam itself and then i did the same thing on the outside or the inside most layer the thicker part of the belt and this is just a piece of six millimeter eva foam that's been fabric covered with uh with with vinyl Oh, vinyl, I think is what I ended up using with this. And it's just coated with hot glue on the edges and folded over. And as soon as it was dried and cooled up, I would just move on down and keep peeling and pushing. So uh, yeah, then when that was done, I did the same thing. Put down a washer, I put down the screw, and then I or put down put down a washer, put down the foam, put down another piece of washer, put down the screw, it's screwed into place, and they're in there tightly, it's going nowhere. So um, really, really damn pleased with how this came out. And I wanted to do a video about how I did it. So maybe one of these days, depending how I'm feeling, and maybe if I get that Rider 2 belt done sometime soon, uh, maybe I'll just put one together and we'll give it away to somebody. That sound like fun? But you gotta be subscribed, so if you ain't subscribed, you know, do the thing. The last thing I wanted to talk about, because I haven't really talked about it too, too much, um, I want to give a group a shout out in particular, and then a, well, a group and then a material a shout out. Um, so this is my boot, and these are my gloves. These gloves were made by ETC Cosplay on Etsy. They do Sentai gloves, and these ones were just green ones I had left over. I asked nicely if they could give me a pair, and they, they did. Uh, these were so damn good, and I was so damn impressed, and I wanna do a Shin Kamen Rider, but Shin Ichigo, the, the, the one with the silver gloves and silver boots. I'm gonna order another pair of boots like this and I already have a pair of silver gloves like this from ETC and I'm gonna try to make that one as well. So I have like the the forever and always Kamen Rider Ichigo outfit. You know what I mean? Uh, now the boots. The boots were made by a awesome gentleman out in Pakistan. These are actually racing boots and he's one of the few guys that actually does boots in my size. So these were 12 and a half. It's a very tight fit. And these are racing boots for like equestrian races. So they are designed to point a little bit more forward. He said that if I'm gonna be mostly walking in them, just keep walking them and it'll, it'll start to uh, bend in the same place as it does on the costume. And uh, he did me a huge solid. Uh, the only thing he couldn't do for me was green. So the paint I used is called Angelo paint. So um, the dude I ordered from was on Amazon and every single time he was sent me an email, it was always through Amazon. I wish I remember what his store name is. If I find it, I'll put it down in the description later. Uh, but I, I gotta find whoever's doing those boots. Cause like these guys were like, these were a hundred dollar boots. 
but these are some of the best Dan boots I've used for anything. And I see myself using these over and over and over again for many a show rider cosplay. So definitely keeping those. So if you want the gloves, ETC cosplay, the boots, they were riding boots, specifically horse riding boots. These ones came from Pakistan. So keep an eye on where the location is and where you're purchasing it from. Uh, took them about a week and a half to get here, but damn, they went all the way across the planet and they came in some of the best damn quality I've seen. I gotta figure out who actually made these because I, I love these. These are really damn good boots. So, and the paint, again, Angelo paint, Angelo leather paint. It worked great. They have a silver that's really, really pretty too. So one of these days I'm gonna be painting that up. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. All right, so last thing I'm gonna share with the Shin Kamen Rider outfit this is the back. Uh, I made these wings literally the night before and I made a pattern. Uh, I will try to digitize it and post it up somewhere. I don't know when I will do it, but eventually, because I'm trying to help everyone who wants to have a Shin Kamen Rider to have a Shin Kamen Rider outfit. And uh, y'all want me to put it on? I kind of feel like just putting the whole dang thing on. It's already getting really hot and sweaty. So you know what? I'm going to put it on. I'll, I'll goof off for y'all for like a minute. I'll put the upper half off. How about that? I'll put the upper half on and then that should be good enough because you can't see my legs anyways. So I'm doing this because I love you, YouTube. And, and maybe, maybe if you guys are really cool and say Kamen Rider three times in the chat, he will show up and reply to you in the chat. Oh my God. Oh, oh. So give me just a minute and I'm going to take a short break, get this stuff on. And I'll see you in a second. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. It's very hot in here. It's super hot in here. 
I don't know how long I'll be able to wear it, but I'll do my best. All right, let's see. I used fabric tape for my number one cosplay. Your method for chin chest looks way better. Thank you very much. All right, who else we got here? Best series since Zuoger. Yeah, Don Brothers has been very good. Uh, I, being Hiroshi Fujioka, I totally understand what it takes to make a good tokusatsu series. And uh, yeah, Don Brothers is good. Gosh, I'll talk This is dope. I love this. Ah. Woo! Oh, he's even hotter with the mask. But yeah, super happy with how this came out. Oh shit, is that what I look like on stream? Damn, dude, I haven't, I haven't seen too many pictures of me wearing this, but like, this is really damn cool. Um, I'm gonna let my hair down for a little while too. Ah, oh. give me two seconds, I gotta check the print. Vix gives you an opportunity to look at my belt and see how it's locked on the back of it. I worked hard on that, thank you very much. Very cool, Dusty, thank you for sharing. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be going for probably another 20 minutes before we have to switch that around. So, uh, what can we do? What can we talk about for a minute? Other than this and retcon. You sound so ominous and cool. Yeah, it looks really good. Oh my God, y'all, thank you so much. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get some more made for some other people. I really want to help some folks out get this done right. Um, If you hit the lock and the power button, does it take, does the belt take a screenshot? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, maybe. This is really, really warm. This is super, super warm. Oh my God, this is way too warm. Uh, all right, tell you what, I'm gonna take this off in a second, but uh, I'm gonna do something really dumb and super, super nerdy. So bear with me for just a minute, okay? All right. Okay. It is all. Semaru shoka akuma no gundan ware ra o nera o kuro ikage sekai no hei wa o mamuru tame go go let's go. Hagayaki machine. Laida. Yeah! Laida. Yeah! Come in, Laida. Come in, Laida. 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 Ore wa Hango Takushi. Ore wa Kaizo Nengen Ren. Shoka. Ore ga taos. Okay, no more. It's too hot and that was too much. Ah. Ow! Oh! It's so hot! Ah. <laughs> alright, alright, so we're gonna clip that and post that somewhere, so I hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs> uh, give me a couple seconds to hop back out of this and get a drink and use the restroom really, really quick. And when I come back, we'll get this printer stuff going a little bit more. Oh, okay, Common Rider nerds, I hope you like that I indulged you today. You're welcome.
All right. Thanks for bearing with me all. I hope you guys enjoyed me goofing off like that. That was fun. All right, I'm gonna put my hair back up. We're gonna throw the hat back on and then we're gonna start focusing on 3D printing for the rest of the night. Hope you guys will enjoy hanging out. Ooh. Oh, we had 10 watching, wow. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. I think our record of people watching was around 17 or 20. I can't remember, it was somewhere around there and that was right after one of the Team Common Rider streams or one of the Team Rider streams. That's before they changed Team Common Rider. But uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun having all those people there. I feel like my work has like gone up leaps and bounds since then. So uh, I hope it, I hope it looks better than it has been. Anyways, we're gonna put the Ichigo helmet back up for a while. Oh geez. There it goes. Okay. I'll set this over here. Nice and out of the way. Oh no, what happened to it? Oh jeez, you guys, it broke it. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, this is a messed up print. It's not completely perfect. It's missing the teeth, but it's still pretty cool. And if you want to turn this into another Common Rider helmet of some kind, you probably could. Uh, it's not perfect, but if you're interested in the chat, uh, tell me. Maybe I'll give this one away at the end of the night. It's not perfect, it's an incomplete print, but you can do something with it, I'm almost positive. So if you're interested and you want the broken helmet, as is, say something in the chat, maybe I'll ship it to you. When did you get the scarf? Oh, the scarf, okay, so um, I, I just buy fabric and just cut it into a strip that has this kind of shape. Yeah, I'll bring this closer so you can see, okay? You're gonna cut a long strip that's about, let's say six inches wide. You're gonna cut the shape out of either end, right? You're gonna wrap it around your neck once, and then you're gonna make a knot to where it stays to a certain tightness. So make sure it's close, but not so tight that you're choking yourself out, okay? You wanna make it to where you can even wrap this around twice and then still be able to fit your neck through it if you want to. But I still use it just the one. And then after that, you do one more loop where you can adjust it slightly by pulling one in particular. So this is an elastic fabric. I hope you heard it after that. I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go through it one more time. Yeah, it's six inches wide. You wanna have like this kind of a pattern cut at the end. It's a long, long strip. So just make it to where you have, drape it around your neck until it dangles to about your belly button area. And then you wanna wrap it around your neck to do one knot to where it stays to a certain tightness and never goes tighter than that on one side. And then you're gonna do another loop knot to where all you have to do is pull on the other side and you can pull it down to tighten it, but it will never go further past that knot you make. Okay? This way you don't get choked out by somebody grabbing and pulling it. I've had experiences in the cosplay community. <laughs> I shouldn't say things like that because it makes other people sound crazy or it makes me look like I'm troublesome. Uh-oh. When you talk, there's a funny ping noise. Oh, so I fixed it, okay. Sorry, it's probably the printer going off over here. Ooh. So I'm gonna put the scarf back on. Well, if I took my hat off and put it back on, so now I can just like fumble in front of everybody. This is, woohoo. See, I'm the fun one, not the bright one. No problem. Like I said, the fabric's a stretchy fabric. It's called Lycra. And the common name for it would be like spandex, but it's it's Lycra, it's a swimsuit fabric. It's really good stuff. Uh, this side has a shiny, the other side has a matte. I figured it would look better because then you'd be able to see two different colors when it's going in the wind or in a certain way. And like, I, I do confer, can confirm, it does go in the wind. You just got to get it in the right place. Uh, when in doubt, put one part forward and the other one on your back. That way, if someone gets a photo from you from behind or from the front, you'll always have some scarf action. Also, if you have it kind of slightly dangling over your shoulders because it sits out a little bit more, if the wind's hitting just right, there's a chance it'll start flowing with it. It's pretty dope. Must can't, can't lie. It was fixed when you remembered your mic. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Very cool. All right. Um, how far along are we on this print? So what I'm waiting for right now is for this to get to a certain layer height to where I can cut off this piece of filament and then put on 
this pink, and because the pink isn't transparent and the green is, you'll be able to see through the green a little bit and the thing that will pop is the lettering, and that's what I'm focused on doing. Um, all the rings say retcon on them, like the convention, and uh, they seem to be like the big hit for the weekend. Like those and the coins both, like people like the coins, but the rings were like, they were they were going like Saturday. I was just constantly running to the other hallway so I can get to my heat gun so I can heat these things up without anybody around just to keep people safe. Cause you know, you don't want to hit anybody with the tip of a hot heat gun. That's no good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you all how I did it here because none of y'all are here. I could share it with you though. Whew. And then uh, on today, it's Sunday, I actually was able to take the character right here. His name's Crit, like CRT, like a CRT TV. And uh, I was able to 3D print him as a little placard and then we did a bigger one. And I think next year we're going to try to make it to where he's like a whole like display stand. I think that'd be really, really cool. If I can get lights in there. Oh, man, that would do that would do so good. Oh, what are you all excited about? February is coming to a close pretty, pretty darn quick. Only like what a week left and then it's March. What's going on in March? Let's see here. Oh, the new Resident Evil 4 is coming out really soon. Uh, I love the original Resident Evil 4. I'm eager to check out this remake or uh, redo, I guess is what they really should be called because they keep some elements, uh, they keep some elements, but they try new stuff. Um, it's very apparent they're doing some new stuff because Luis seems to be like a co-op person at this point. And if it ends up being like a co-op thing, then like, all right, cool. Not the worst person to pick for a co-op thing. But at the same time, I think the diehards are going to be like really like not cool, and then the idiots that played Resident Evil 4 like a couple times back in the day are gonna be like the same way, idiots. So uh, if you're excited about Resident Evil 4, I hope you have fun and I hope the haters don't get you down. Uh, I'm gonna play it, I'm excited about it. Uh, oh, and then King Oger, yeah, King Oger's right around the corner too. Uh, I'm still not sure how I feel about it. There's, I love the designs. I think, I think the bugs is such a cool thing. I just, I don't like knights. I don't think the knights idea was cool and honestly if if toy is going to do the, the whole knight theme i really feel like they should focus on just being knights and not being knights that are also x you know what i mean like i didn't feel like it worked with Rio soldier i'm not sure it's going to work with this if this ends up being like Rio soldier 2 but better because bugs awesome i'm on board uh but if it ends up just being Rio soldier 2 because uh, we need to try something different this time i'm gonna be bummed out um Especially following up a show like Don Brothers, like Toshiki Inoue is not somebody you can follow up very easily. You just can't. Dude's, dude's powerful. Like when I say Don Brothers is might possibly be my favorite Super Sentai, uh, my favorite Super Sentai before that is Jetman, followed very quickly by Shin Kenjiro. Like Jetman is awesome, but it's also a Toshiki Inoue uh, Sentai series. It's the last time he did it. And that was 30 years ago. So like, yeah. And no way knows how to do Sentai and he knows how to do it well because he just makes some fun damn shows. But I hope for the best for King Oger. I really do. The mecha looks great. Um, yeah. Yeah. God, I hate Ryu Soldier. Ruined my knight's idea. Oh, I'm sorry, TJ. That's a bummer. I think they're kings and not knights, but yeah, I hope it's not like Ryu Soldier where they drop that theme early on. Yeah, like if it's... I know they're supposed to be like kings, but they, they kind of have like the knight kind of look more so than... I feel like what Ryu Soldier had, like those armor plates on them are great. I will admit though, like doing armor in that style, like they did with Don Bros and also a little bit with Pat Ranger, um, like adding some stuff to the Sentai suit where it's more than just the spandex, I think has been the smartest move they could they could have done. Like, I, I I hate to say it, but when people look at like like Ryder or Ultraman and, or Gridman and like. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Like, like uh, Metal Hero stuff. They see those suits and they're like, oh, Power Rangers. And it's like, all right, well, if you ever remember Power Rangers, the only one that really had the armor was green. So like, whatever. But green was one that everyone got hyped about because they looked so fucking cool with the armor and very rarely did it get passed around to two other, other people and stuff. So like having a set where the team ball has an armor is pretty cool. It, it makes them a little bit more unique than compared to previous seasons. And yeah, I guess I guess it works for Sentai too. Like, let, let the color-coded team have its armor, goddammit. It's okay. Now, with that being said... With that being said... I have to admit... I... Like some things about Kamen Rider Geats. But I, I am, oh man, am I tired of some of the Sentai staff working on some of these shows for Kamen Rider specifically. Um, 
I'm not trying to be like, man, it feels like Super Sentai right now, but good God, it's been feeling too much like Super Sentai recently. I don't know what it is, but anytime Ryder has more than three dudes, if they're working together, more than three people working together, I feel like I'm just watching Super Sentai. I just, and, and like, I know they all look different, but this ties back to me talking about the new team and their armor. The new team and their armor, it looks super cool, but like, where, where's the line? Like, I know they're both very much related to each other because I mean, they're made by the same guy. They insp one's inspired by the other and it took other elements and like, it's its own thing at this point, but they're both have such longevity. I, I, I'm just like, I'm cool with them sharing ideas to make each other successful. What I'm not necessarily cool with is I don't want these two to feel too muddy together. There was like a good flow that we had with Heisei Rider up until about midway through, Zero one, I'd say, and then it got kind of weird. Uh, I actually liked Revice. It has a lot of problems. Completely admit, it has a lot of problems. But like that was like the most fun I'd had with a Rayo Rider so far. And Geats has some really damn cool shit. And I, I don't get me wrong, I, I like Ace. I think he's got some fun stuff about him. Uh, some character traits that I might actually uh, I share too. But uh, not not a lot of them, just a couple. Anyways, something about the show just feels too Super Sentai for me. And usually I'm like, hey, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. Awesome. This is one of my instances where I'm like, oh, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. Damn, dude. Uh, I hope this this feeling changes soon. Um, usually when I start complaining about a common writer show, it starts to get better. So. <laughs> Yeats doesn't really feel like Sentai to me, but Saber totally did. Okay, so. Yeah, see, that's actually something I wanted to talk about. Saber, Saber was the first one that gave me those feels like really, really strongly. And I was like, Ugh, that's not great. And then Revice, there were select episodes where, yeah, that same kind of thing, I felt it too. But but Geeks, I feel like it's hitting harder because I feel like I'm being fatigued by that at this point. Do not get me wrong when I say this, I totally believe that Kamen Rider should have more than one writer. But I think they're... They're, they're making too many missteps by making too many shows with so many common writers. Hear me out. I think it's really cool that they have as many writers as they do, but I really do feel like that they have, they are missing an opportunity of remolding and reusing specific characters and having new suits for them, having constant things swapping out. Like I kind of miss when Double had those nine different forms he could change between plus extreme and then also Fang Joker, but like, what if Excel had more forms than just his blue and yellow one? You know what I mean? And his red one. Um, why does, like, I feel like Geats was a great time for them to be like, all right, cool, we have all these different suits and we have like a few select people, this is gonna be great. And then they're like, all right, we're gonna have new writer every single roundabout. And then, oh man, um, I like Ryuki a lot, but there's some things that Ryuki brought on that I feel like we can't get away from sometimes. And another thing too, like I'm firm with this, I'll say this so I'm blue in the face. If you're, if you're a bad dude with a belt, you are not a common writer, and I'm tired of them calling them common writers, even in the marketing. You guys had a huge step forward when we were calling things raiders in Zero One. If we kept rolling with that, dude, I would love to see some common raiders, because common raiders sound like, you know, they're just the bad versions of common writers. Like, that I can accept. But I don't want to call them writers, because I think, I think writer, like, the, the idea of what the writer is, is like, it's the hero. You know, not not the main guy, but like the, the dude's trying to do the right thing in this situation. And like, I just, I feel weird trying to be like, oh yeah, Kamen Rider Oja. Cause like, he's a dick. Really cool he got survived though. That was really neat. Thank you, Toei, very cool. However, um, I still think having a better distinction between them. Plus then if we do some kind of distinctiveness between them, maybe we could do a big, hey, big good writer versus big bad writer movie. And I, I swear to God, if we have one more writer series where the final boss is another fucking common writer, or, 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 oh! okay, I'm gonna be real. I've been wanting to talk about some of this stuff for a long time, my, my actual opinions on some of these shows, but um, some people that I know and have worked with before and some of my friends that actually do work on these shows, they always ask me to say something positive about the shows and I always really, really do try to say positive things. They also ask us not to compare it to other things and I really try to do my best. But there comes a point where when they ask you to do this, you start bottling up all these different things that you want to say. And yeah, they might be slightly negative, but this never coming from a place of hate or I deserve this because I am this. No, I know this is stuff is for kids, but this is my perspective is 
if the adults that are watching it aren't allowed to have some opinions on it that might be like, hey, can we tweak this to be better for the kids other than like, you know, the gratuitous, like, let's make this like Canadian moms friendly. Like that's not, nah. nah. I I'm talking more so like, something to where the older fans can still enjoy it too, just as much as the younger group, but small things to where even the younger kids might enjoy that better. Like, I'm trying to think of a good example of this. But again, like the whole thing of me feeling like it's kind of like Sentai where it feels like there's too many old teamworky kind of things happening. Like I just, I want some more solo stuff. I want a little bit more Heisei drama. And like, I want to be able to express that these feelings in a way where it isn't just like sounding like I'm trying to crap on these shows. Cause I, I really do enjoy them. I think Toei Tokusatsu is some of the coolest stuff on earth. It just bums me out that there's been such a weird transitionary period at the beginning of Reiwa till now. And I don't know, I'm, I'm not trying to be like, old man shakes his fist at Cloud, but I, I would like to see some of the style of the older Heisei shows start to come back. Not like the, the, ooh, the edge, but just like the overall like style of filming and general drama and plot twists. Cause I feel we've gotten to a point where these things are so toyetic and beyond what like Heisei was. Like I know there's dudes complaining about how toyetic like, like Heisei was. Ray was been like, hey, yo, pull the accelerator. <laughs> Like they, they, it feels like they haven't stopped, you know? Um, so yeah, the reason why I'm saying all this is maybe I see somebody that I know talks to other people might say something like, hey, maybe Dusty has a point. Because uh, some of the things I've asked for have actually popped up. I remember about a year and a half ago, I was like, yo, I'm an old dude common Rider. Like, not like an old guy, but like maybe late 30s, early 40s common Rider, maybe something like that. And then we ended up getting a 60 something year old common Rider. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, and then I was also like, yo, I'd love to see like maybe coming out of black, like a CSM or something more like that. And we got much more than that. Holy crap. Uh, the Kuga manga coming over. And like, I know that has a couple of issues with translation and whatnot, but like, hey, we're getting it. And it's not that bad, honestly. Plus they're gonna be doing a second volume. So like good on Titan for coming back and bringing that back to fix it up a bit. Um, what else popped up? We had the Rider game, a bunch of things happened. So, so, so much more Heaven's Tornado. Oh, we had more double. Like that was fun. We had so much stuff pop off with the 50th anniversary. And like, I didn't get to talk a lot about it publicly. I'm gonna be doing more about it before, you know, the big 50th is over. But you know what else is cool? We do have one more big 50th and that's uh, V3s. So yay V3. Oh, is this, is this doing its thing? Is it still zigging and zagging? Uh, one second, folks. So this is at the point where I need to switch it. Almost. It's about the zigzag. Zigzag, dang it. I have people waiting for me. Yes, okay, it's time. One moment, folks. I gotta switch this around. So I pause the print, and we're gonna switch around the filament now. Okay, um, resume. All right, cool. I'm going to bring this in closer so I can get a good look at this one. Oh, maybe I can't bring it in too much closer. All right, that's probably the closest we could do right now. Sorry, folks. But uh, I'll bring this up in a second so you can see exactly what these turned into. Anyways, where was I? We were talking about how I feel about some of these. Um, oh, gosh, where was I? Oh, okay. So this is what I was going to mention. Um, I mean, really do appreciate all the stuff we did most recently for this big Rider 50th stuff, especially over here on the west side too. Like, like Team Rider did some really cool stuff this year and like good on them. Um, if there was one thing I want to say though, is that if they're trying to do more stuff out here in the west and bring more stuff over, I really wish they would do more private meetings with some of the bigger fans and, and people in the community to do more bigger event kind of stuff. Uh, I don't mean like bigger events, like like the, the meetups and stuff, those go great and I'm happy they do those. But what I'm talking about more so is, is like, I know they do the surveys and stuff. I think what would be much more interesting though, is maybe having everyone come together doing like like a like a focus group. That's, that's the word I was looking for, like a focus group where um, 
we're allowed to express not just the most positive things we feel about these shows, but also some of the things where we're like, this kind of bums us out. And what, one of the things that's bumming me out is that like, man, we have so many instances where we have Kamen Rider on other s styles. Like, like the fact Black Sun happened was amazing. I want more shows like that, where it's a more adult kind of style Kamen Rider, but it's not like, oh, ooh, the edge in all places. We have this new Shin Kamen Rider thing coming out next month, and that's like up my alley too. If we're gonna do more anime, man, I wanna see Shin Kamen Rider, be or not Shin, yeah, Shin Kamen Rider Spirits, that's what I wanna see spirits because like the spirits manga is so damn good and the fact that the kuga manga and the double anime got it before those like that bites um and then i'll say this too this this bums me out i had a dude tell me oh common writers and anime is only an anime and the minute i showed him all the other stuff he's like that's not real that's power rangers and i wanted to just grab him and be like get out but i could not because that is illegal and he was in his own building anyways this whole thing anyways i, I just want there to be like a thing where they're like Hey, we're having like a town hall at seven. If you can show up, show up and say your piece. But specifically the people that are being objective about the overall everything and not just like, I think we need to redo zero one. You know what I mean? All right. <laughs> Let's see what the chat's been saying because I haven't paid attention in a minute. All right, let's see. Hey, Bandai, for once, I'm asking for it. Where's my Futopii roleplay toys? They did them. They made them. They just haven't started doing the new ones. They probably started showing that stuff off and we're waiting to see if anybody cared, and then they'll probably build it and put it together. Um, which really shouldn't be that hard, considering one of them's just a remold of another toy. Who knows? Maybe we will. Uh, new CSM stuff, that's true. TKR has very little bargaining power of their own. Yes, I understand that. But here's the thing. Uh, I also understand that some of the dudes they're talking to are people that aren't that hard to find. And you might be able to just talk to them as a person to person in certain places. <coughs> and be able to say something that might have more sway than the whole team has sometimes. I didn't say that publicly. Um, you're saying I should be allowed to express my love for Saban's Master Rider. Yes, yes, you should. And uh, speaking of, I need to get a hold of Zarin Zephyr pretty soon. I've been so damn busy this last month with too much going on. Uh, I'm probably going to try and invite him to the office here pretty soon because uh, he has something really cool that came through and I need to pay my part in order to be part of that project. I think we talked about it on a previous stream, so go check it out. I respect Team Common Rider for their efforts. I'm very critical of them. You know, um... I, I want to be more critical, but at the same time, I completely understand where some of their, their business stuff is coming from. So I, I can't give them too much shit. There, there are times where it's like, oh my God. But there's other times where it's like, if that's the best they could have done for us, they really went super far. So I, I, I still have faith in them, but it's one of those things where I just, I just wish that they could have just a little bit more sway. I really, really do. Because um, some of those guys over there really really do give a shit and like i know some fans that are in it just to be like saying like oh i'm part of it woo like and then there's other people who are actively just being quiet and doing whatever they can to make this work out and those are the secret heroes that i think need more attention and there are some of those people over on team common rider for sure that guy's only watched it no no he was talking about uh he's not talking about the sd rider show he was talking about common rider double specifically which is like you know who you're talking to <laughs> anyways um the full rip of sd rider there's one episode i know for sure that's up there and it's just black rice gets dunked on by v3 anyways i love zero and zephyr i've been following you since the bucks toy reviews oh my god really you've been watching me for that long holy crap that's a character that like i'd love to bring back like really really badly just because like i i don't like some of the stuff that goes down in the south like at all but like i also really do love the rednecks that are just like just cheerful and really nice genuinely nice people that aren't like the kind of e types that i've talked about before but like like, like those kind of rednecks are fun because they're, they're not stupid they're different and uh sometimes they have like redneck wisdom where you're like you do what with what you did him what well, i didn't bet this one guy who put bleach and some other thing in this bottle of mountain dew and he put it through the ceiling of his shed and it made it like a light that worked during the uh, daytime it's super damn bright and i was like what and he's like yeah this is you just that you do you just get her done that dude's actually one of the inspirations for the, the buck voice so there you go buck does 3d printing oh no 
If anybody has a 3D printer that does not work very well, has something wrong with it, a gremlin in it perhaps, uh, and you're willing to donate it to thenextdecade.co, please let me know. I might make that video for you. <laughs> oh my God. I was so young when I watched it. They brought joy to me. Man, that makes me happy knowing that you enjoyed it as much as you did. Thanks for sharing. Like, I um, only know a few people that really, really enjoyed those. And uh, I appreciate it because we were just goofing off and having fun. And if, if we were able to share that with you in any small way, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks. Whew, it's hot and there's 12 people watching. Hey, y'all, how you doing? If, uh, if you're late into the chat, Hi, how you doing? You missed it. I got to wear my rider suit later earlier, so if you want to see that, just wait for a little bit later. Uh, we talked about the wedding, and if you want to see some of that, that's also on the channel. Go check around. It's not going to be recommended because there's some copyrighted music in there, so if you want to go check it out, go check it out over on the channel. And if you're not subscribed and you're watching, you know, it's, it's right there. The button, you can click it. And then there's a bell. Ooh, if you click the bell, I actually see who clicks the bell. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll do something cool for somebody this year who clicks the bell. Click the bell. Do we have any of our members still in the chat? If you're in the chat, can you guys show off some of those really cool emotes we made? We have a suit up arrow, we have a suit up down arrow, and we have an Amazon that casts a heart. It's super cute. Buck would be wearing a cardboard 3D glasses circa 2004 and using an inkjet printer. Oh my God, you know, I could totally do that. Oh my God, Buck does 3D printing and all he does is show off how to do uh, Pepakura. Oh my God, I could totally do that. And then that would also work as like, not just a funny video, but like a practical educational video because Peppa Curra is still viable 3D printing methods. If you don't have a 3D printer, but you do have access to a regular printer and some 110 pound cardstock, it's not actually 110 pounds, it's just a, a thickness of cardstock, you too can 3D print with a program called Peppa Curra. Yeah, I should totally do that. I should totally do that. No, I'm not a member, just a Patreon. Oh, speaking about Patreon. Um, I want to talk about that. Patreon, we are going to be doing an overhaul at some point this year. I've been meaning to overhaul that thing super, super hardcore. I want to make it to where there's only like two or three small tiers and then one or two larger tiers. And I wanted those larger tiers strictly to be like one-time things where someone's like, yo, I just want to invest in this particular project you have coming up. And like, it would be something where I make everyone aware of what these project ideas are so they could donate to those things specifically. Uh, we're still a ways out from that, but if you're a Patreon right now, I want you to know I am thinking about y'all. I am trying to figure out how to make this better because I, I, I fell off for a little while and we're getting back up on the mountain. We're working our way there. So yeah, bear with me, but Patreon. So some things changing there soon. Um, if you're a member on the channel, you're gonna be getting a lot of the same benefits that Patreon gets too. It's it's gonna to be almost the same. So wherever you prefer to do it, whether it's on YouTube or Patreon, either way, it's always appreciated. And if you aren't a Patreon person now, just throwing this out there, I have a lot of patterns available. So if you liked Suit Up and you watch Suit Up already, I have a bunch of patterns that are almost the same as that Suit Up uh, Common Rider Ichigo pattern. And there are some things in there where they're not the best, but they'll do the job if you're trying to get some characters made. So consider checking it out. You ain't got it if you don't want to. And uh, yeah, we have some new suit up content coming very, very soon. Uh, I'm going to be chilling this week, just getting a few things, housekeeping stuff done, orders taken care of. And then we're going to be going right back into full production for suit up. It's still going to be a few more weeks until it's done. It might not get out till April. I want to get it out before April. It's just uh, Japan. That's happening again. So... Uh. Cough, Lord Baron, cough. Yeah, don't worry. I'm very well aware it'll happen eventually. You've been asking for so long. Press all the buttons. Oop, 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 oop. All right, I'm going to pop these off real quick and let you take a look at them, and I'll show you what I did to turn these into rings. Okay, do it. So. What we did was we did a transparent green and a everyone's magenta. Transparent green and everyone's magenta. So we're going to pop these off. I'll let you all take a good look at one. So you're like, woo, you just printed a bunch of strips. These aren't rings. Okay, let me show you how I make a ring, smartass. <laughs> I know there's one of you in the chat. You're one of my followers. I'm a smartass too. Birds of a feather now. 
All right, so this is my heat gun. There are many others like it, but this one's mine. I got it as a Christmas gift. Thank you, Katie. Very cool. Ooh, just made it. Just made it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up, and it's going to get a little bit noisy over here, so if you hear, like, whirring and stuff, sorry. But I need it to in order to do the job I'm about to do. So I need to get the dowel as well. One second. If you don't know what a dowel is, dowel is a really fancy way of saying, I got a stick. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna turn this on. Sorry if it gets noisy. I'm gonna let this get floppy and then I'm gonna bend it over the dowel. And then I'll show you what the ring looks like on my finger, okay? Here we go. Here, I'll move you facing over this way so you're not like, you have to hear it too badly, okay? in my hand until it completely starts to cool off. It's gonna form around the shape of this dowel. And when I pull it off, it'll be a wearable ring. All right, I'm gonna bring this up so you all can see how good the fit is. All righty, here's my hand. And here's the ring. And you can see it says retcon on it. Hopefully if the camera focuses, I'm not trying to flip you all off, I promise. But yeah, it fits on my finger relatively nicely. We were able to do it in a large, which I'm wearing right now, a medium and a small for the kiddos. And we even were able to cut it down even smaller for those extra tiny fingers. But yeah, this is how we made rings all weekend. I'll put this up real quick and then I'm gonna do one more nerdy thing. Not usually a nerdy thing I would do, just cause it's not one of my usual favorites, but Redcon on, please. Shabba dooby touch tension. Shabba dooby touch tension. Anybody, anybody watch Wizard? No? Cool. Anyways, yeah, the retcon ring. So I can't take credit for this idea. This was actually an idea by the 3D printing professor where he talked about printing a bunch of strips and then printing um, like little tiny characters or faces and then gluing them onto the ring and then heating them. I was like, why, why even do any of that? Just put the logo on it, higher layer. So then when you see that it's done zigging and zagging the flat parts out and you see it's doing specific letters, you could swap out your color filament and get it to pop some more detail out there. So I did that for these rings and I also made points, which they were kind of small. I think I still have some on the table. Yeah, these were prototypes. Can't really see them too, too super well. But if you go check on Retcon's website or, or maybe on the social medias or wherever they are, yeah, you might be able to find the uh, the Retcon coin that I made. Or maybe I'll post a picture of it on the... Um... Actually, you know, I can show you exactly what it looked like because I have a sticker of that same design on this printer. I forgot, hold on. Hold on, y'all. Yes, I completely forgot. All right, hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'm gonna lift this up. All right, see that green sticker right there? Yeah, it looked like that. Damn it. Oh, I goofed. Anyways, anywho. Retcon was an absolute blast. If you are in the central North Carolina area next year around this time, consider looking for Retcon 2. I'll hopefully be there. Seems like everyone was excited to have me back. Now reverse the colors for the next decade rings. Oh yeah, we actually did those first. Uh, first ones they did were pink with a green outside, so. Let's see, what did I miss over here on the chat? Guy, I'm 10 years is just around the corner. Prize, don't remind me. It was the first Rider D and I watched together as it aired. Oh yeah, same with me and Katie. Katie had not really experienced Common Rider and like, Gaim was really, really good, and I was like, here, check it out. And then she did, and then uh, I remember the uh, the first episode she got to watch 
as it was like airing was the episode where Sid finally goes into Helheim for the first time. I'm not saying anything else because you haven't seen Gaim like damn go watch Gaim. It's a lot of fun. It's one of those writer series where you get to the end of an episode and you're like oh shit what's happening? What's happening now? Oh my god and then like that's almost every other episode. It's ridiculous how they did it and uh, Geno Oboji the writer from that did a really, really damn good job. Actually, I'll tell a story about him. I, I met Gen Arabochi at Anime Expo years and years ago. Um, it was right when Gaim was airing and I got to hear from him that he was writing the last couple episodes on the way home. So after I met him and showed him the helmet that I made and he signed the inside of it, which is really cool. I, I gotta find that thing so I can show y'all, but he also signed my SH figure arts of Kamen Rider Gaim. And I, I gotta bring that out too. I wanna have that displayed and in a cool case, cause like that's one of the coolest pieces of merch I own is a signed SH figure art from the writer of the writer show I like. Anyways, um, I told him I love Takatora. I think I think he was one of the coolest characters. I was like, I know it might sound really dumb, but like even if it's some really dumb way you can bring him back, please bring him back. Don't let him die, don't let him die. And this dude like kind of looked at me with one of those kind of smiles and he said something to his handler. And this is before I started studying Japanese a little bit more seriously. And their handler kind of like looked back up at me and they said, um, do, do you know who he is? And I'm like, yeah, he's Gen Robochi. And she goes, he knows who you are and he replies back and he goes, no, does he really know who I am? Which is like, yo, I'm the butcher. And uh, yeah, long story short, if you don't want to hear Gaim spoilers, plug up your ears for about five seconds. Here we go. Talk to all the J. Wow. Okay, so that's enough. Um, so yeah, do, do I have influence over that? Not sure, but if I did, cool. If I didn't, still not going to take credit for it. He gonna go brr. Yes, it did. Haha, <laughs> he said floppy. <laughs> um, just watch Wizard. Oh, did you like Wizard? Wizard's one where I kind of want to give it another watch because I feel like it didn't give it its serious chance. I know it had some really good moments, but knowing what I know now, maybe I'll have a better appreciation about the whole show because there's a reveal in the show you don't get till the very end. I'm not gonna say what it is, but if you haven't watched Wizard yet and it doesn't feel quite right, I say hang in there. Hang in there till the very bitter end because something at the end gets explained to you. And when it gets explained to you and you start thinking about the whole series overall, you have a better appreciation for Haruto, the main character. Yeah, what's up DJ Kidna? Thank you for coming in, greatly appreciate it. Sorry I took so long to recognize I'm going through the chat right now. How much for a Cyclone Joker inspired ring design? Um, I don't know. Y'all could always hit me up at Dustin at the next decade.co if you need something 3D printed or would like something designed. And if you're in Japan and would like something 3D printed and brought to you before March 17th, I strongly recommend you hit me up in the email so then I can make something like that for you. Shouldn't be too hard. Oh, damn. What if I, okay, okay, hear me out. What if I made one ring that's like thin on both sides, but when you put them together, it's like makes a full size ring and one side's the one half of the double and the other side's the other half of the double logo. That'd be cool. I'm going to think about that. That sounds cool. Dude, I should totally make rider rings. Oh my God. Oh, yo, I should totally make those clips for the wizard rings for any of those wizard fans that want them to be full sized. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yo. Oh, yo. What if I could do like full size like O's belt and just pull all the RF chip components out of those and put them into my, my own CSM full size. Oh shit. The power of 3D printing folks, it gives you so many ideas that they funnel and you end up just getting intimidating and finding another thing to do. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, I still need to watch Madoka too. Yep. Yeah. Am I saying it right? Madoka? Maduka? Maguka? Anyways, Wizard is good right up until the end. Uh, Wizard has moments that are okay. That's just me. But if you think it's good, then it's good. Come for the cool magic man, staying for the Kabachan and his donuts. Kabachan and her donuts. Kevin sounds like we need a watch party in Sunrise Lair. <laughs> what am I supposed to call you then? How about Sunrise Land? So they did it. Anyways. Um, oh my god, let him cook. Madoka. 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 Ooh. So, um... Kerbos. I actually had a lot of people ask me to turn the Kerbo into a Christian Kerbo, 
So I went on to printables, not printables, I went to cults and I found the, the free Kerbo file that's out there. And I went to printables and I found a really generic like cross and I made sure these were both like remixable files. I'm gonna be posting the Christian Kerbo on my printables eventually, but I'm gonna make sure that it links over to the guy Kerbo because mine's like a really crappy mi mesh mix. And like he did all the work to make that Kerbo, but I wanna make sure everyone can have the one where he has this little cross there. I'm gonna maybe try to do one where he has like the Bible too, but like, I want to make more Kerbos for people because those things are fun and adorable. And like, I want Terminal Montage to have a bunch of them. I know he can't market them. If he can market them, man, I'd be there to be like, yo, let me help. But apparently he can't market them and it bums me out. Maruka. Ma, 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 ma. Okay, how about this? Let's play, let's play a game. It's a really simple game. If you like anime and you like tokusatsu, recommend one anime to a tokusatsu fan. Personally, I think checking out the show, what's a good one to check out? What would be a good one to check out that's tokusatsu related? Uh, oh, Samurai Flamenco. If you liked Kamen Rider Double or maybe Kamen Rider Kuga, these are not like the most like super, super serious tokusatsu thing, but it's one of those things where it hits all the tropes really, really well of what like tokusatsu stuff can be. Um, and it starts off like kick-ass. So if you don't know what kick-ass is, it's a story where this kid turns himself into a superhero in the real world, but it's really just a bunch of nerds dressing up and beating the crap out of each other. But as the story of Samurai Flamenco progresses, it eventually becomes a real tokusatsu superhero anime kind of thing. And it's, it's pretty dope. There's some really neat references in there. So if you know a anime that tokusatsu fans might like, drop it in the chat right now. And in a couple minutes, I will read them off, and if I know them, I'll say my piece on them, and if I don't, I'll add it to my list of stuff to check out. Sound like fun? Cool. I'm foisty. All right, so we got a couple in already. We have Love After World Domination. I haven't had a chance to check out Love After World Domination, but I know it was something that was on last year, and the only way I've heard it described to me is that it is straight up the Zonette and Red Racer kind of like lovey dovey episode of of Car Ranger. Oh yeah, of Car Ranger, but the anime. So like, definitely something I want to check out for sure. The next one I'm seeing is from DJ Kidna, Diver for serious henshin hero action. Sadamitsu for the Destroyer for more lighthearted henshin hero action. Okay, those ones sound cool. I know Diver for a fact. That's a really damn cool anime. That's a fun one. Uh, Kevin says, Miss Kuroitsu. I have not heard about that one. Kev, give me like a quick synopsis in there. Uh, DJ Kidna says, Karas, if you want something similar to Garo. Gokai Orange brings up one that I know pretty damn well. Beautiful Joe. Henshin a go-go, baby. Uh, so, <laughs> I love Beautiful Joe. That's like one of my favorite games. Like a really cool game. So like if you're, if you're looking for a tokusatsu kind of style game, and if you're somebody who likes emulating your GameCube, not your shitty PlayStation 2, but your GameCube, because that's what it came out on first, dog, uh, go check out Beautiful Joe. And if you like Dante from Devil May Cry, you know, Ruben, Ruben Langdon, that guy, Mac Windy from Cob B Fighter Kabuto. Whoa, another Tokusatsu reference. Uh, yeah, Dante's in the PlayStation version if you're not gonna be cool and play the GameCube version. But yeah, those games are awesome. But if you didn't know, there is a Beautiful Joe anime that came out and it was actually aired over here in the States a long time ago. If you go look online, you can find some of the DVDs for dirt damn cheap. But they're from the UK, but they should work in most DVD players. So go look for Beautiful Joe, highly recommended, but I also really recommend the game. The game is awesome. It even has some awesome mecha fights. It's a good game. It's great. It's done by I'ma block you Hideki Kamiya from Platinum Games back when it was over at Clover. And if you don't know, Hideki Kamiya is a hardcore old school Showa style Fukusatsu fan. Um, don't. Talk to him about it on Twitter. That dude will just straight up block you. Even if you're just talking about him and Tokusatsu and how he's a fan, he'll just be like, block. And it's like, motherfucker, I never said anything to you. Anyways. <sighs> Four kids got it, if I remember correctly. Okay, so just accept the fact that the dub might not be the best. Go check out the Japanese version. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got on here. SSSS Gridman. 
that's one that I've seen and it was pretty, pretty damn good. I liked it a lot. It took me a few episodes to finally get into the swing of it. Um, mostly because I love the original Gridman and I was kind of hoping it would have the same vibe. It took a little while to get to that vibe. The best way I can describe Gridman or SSSS or SSSS Gridman is that it's like a really long episode of the original TV series. But you get to the end of it and if you're not like, oh, I got that lump in my throat, oh. You, the show wasn't for you, but you watched it, so good job. <laughs> Let's see what else we got in here. All right. Miss Kuroitsu, monster maker researcher, designs monsters to defeat the hero, but struggles against a lack of funding and corporate bureaucracy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to check that out. That sounds really damn funny. Um, I've always always wanted to like see like Shocker's side of the story. You know what I mean? Like, ah, damn it, Kamen Rider beat us again. What the hell are we going to do? I know this time we'll fight him, but this time it'll be a it'll be a scorpion man. All right, you want to bring a scorpion man? Yeah, we're gonna use a scorpion man against Common Rider. Cool. What's your budget? Or what? What's our budget? What's your budget for your scorpion guy, bro? Uh, um, ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Do you know how ten thousand dollars didn't even pay for the man's boot? If we can't even kill his boot, why are we gonna spend less than his boot in order to make a monster to kill him? Oh man, maybe I should really rethink this. Yeah, come back to me when you have a better idea, Dr. Shinigami or Dr. Grim Reaper, whatever you, get out of here, you fucking Dracula cape looking. Ugh. But you know what I mean? Like, I think that'd be so damn funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, Katie says, do rah rah rah, which um, I've seen do rah rah rah. And uh, do I think it's like a tokusatsu related? Not entirely. There's some stuff in there that I think a tokusatsu fan would greatly enjoy, especially if you've been to Ikebukuro before. Ikebukuro does have some hella hardcore tokusatsu relation to it, but it's more of like a big anime town, but it's cool. Totally worth checking out. Uh, let's see what else we got. Megadong says the wonderful 101 uh, I don't, I don't know if there's an anime for it, but the game is really solid, and I think it came out on Switch and PC as well. So uh, it was originally on the Wii U. Go check it out if you have a chance. Wonderful 101. It's also done by um, Platinum, and it's got a lot of references to a lot of Tokusatsu characters in there, and it's got a lot of feel of Beautiful Joe. So go check that one out too. Wonderful 101. Good game. Not sure if it's an anime or not. Oh, okay, so we got a lot of local heroes that Kevin's recommending, but one of them in particular, Yabai Kamen. Uh, that dude's a lot of fun. Uh, I'd like to throw in another one in there. Uh, any of the Dogengers. I know it's more tokusatsu, but like if you have a chance to check out Dogengers and the new Dogenger series that came out, those are really damn good shows. They're awesome. They're a lot of fun. And uh, Kita Q-Man is, is what an enigma. Seriously. Oh, uh, another local hero I want to shout out just because like every time I pop on Twitter, he's still there and it makes me laugh every time I see him. Dent Man. Go follow Dent Man. Just make sure you brush your teeth first. Cool. Oh, it has cool motorcycle lady. Yes, yes. Dank. Durarara does have a cool motorcycle lady. Can confirm. Is cool motorcycle lady. Go go watch it for Selty. She's she's dope. Oh, DJ Kinda came in swinging with one of the coolest more Tokusatsu animes. And like, yeah, I agree. You want to see the progenitor of what Kamen Rider and Super Sentai was supposed to be? Go look at Cyborg 009. It is the big anime thing that Shoto Ichinomori got to do first. And Cyborg 09 is dope. If you want to see the show that like makes these things the thing, go check it out. Actually, I'm going to show you all something cool. I need to, I need to go find my wallet real quick. And I need to make sure I hold it very particular way, but I want to show you something super, super cool. Um, when I was out in Japan, I visited the Shotaro Ishinomori Manga Museum, and I befriended one of the ladies that works there. And I still send off a letter every once in a while just to be like, hey, how you doing? Hope you're doing good. You know, how, how's the family? That kind of thing, right? So I'll make sure I don't find uh, okay. So I'm covering her information, but uh, my friend Natsumi, she works over at the Shotaro Ishinomori Manga Museum, and her card is drawn in the same style as Cyborg 09. Isn't that cool? But it gets even cooler. Uh, that's her uniform that she wears at the museum every day that she works. Anybody that's a staffer wears the Cyborg 009 outfits, and it's friggin' cool! It's super dope. Um, and I'm covering this one, but like, it's another like four of my Bandai friend cards. Now I'm just flexing, all right? Put your wallet away, dummy. 
Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, the Ishinomori Manga Museum, if you don't believe me, go check it out. They have some pictures and videos on their YouTube channel and on Google showing how their staff are wearing the Cyborg 009 outfits. It's really cool. What else do we got on here? There's a new Super Sentai anime based on a manga. Its localized name is Go Go Loser Ranger or something like that. I'll have to look that up. I haven't heard about anything like that yet. Uh, I would also may say Bubblegum Crisis counts if you dig a cyberpunk vibe. Oh yeah, I, I would recommend that one too. It's got like a like a neat armor set and that's a little bit more unique and stuff you probably couldn't really do with Tokusatsu. Well, maybe now, definitely not then, but yeah, go check out that one. That's not a bad one. Um, Kaiju number eight is also getting an anime adaptation. That's really dang cool. Um, I've been wanting to go check out the manga because one of Katie's friends. Yeah, there she goes. She said it right now. One of her friends is working on the lettering. That's so dang cool. Oh, DJ Kidna goes, oh, dang, how could I forget Shinesman? OK, so Shinesman is an older one, but uh, I remember he showed me that at his place way, way, way back in the day. I don't remember too, too much about it, but what I do remember is that, oh, my God, there's a lot of flashing lights and these guys are just shouting and wait, 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 what is? Oh, it is a sun. What? Uh, that's the best way I could describe it. So go check out Shinesman if you got a chance. That's a that's a weird one. Uh. Toei Worldwide Channel had something called Guy Slugger. Uh, Guy Slugger. That sounds familiar, but it the one that I remember, it was it Guy Slugger or Guy Third? I know there's Guy Third and there's another one called Voice Lugger, Luger. Voice Lugger. That was the last Ishinomori show that he worked on or had a consultation stuff on. And it also has uh, Ichiro Mizuki as the, the lead in that show too, rest in peace. I'm so bummed out. I haven't had a chance to say it yet, but Ichiro Mizuki passed away a little while ago and it, it mums me the hell out. Like uh, he was one of my favorite Japanese singers. And um, I know some of the people that worked with him like Shocker Ono, and I still see them posting about him even a few months after he's passed away. So like uh, mad respect to Ichiro Mizuki, Aniki. Uh, I miss him. I'm gonna continue to miss him. He's like, half of my Japanese karaoke like set list. Ugh, bums me out, but hey, this means I gotta sing even harder when I get back to Kara, when I'm out there. Heat Guy J is good if you want something similar to Robot KG. Oh, speaking about Robot KG, okay, 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 okay. I gotta talk about something. There's something I forgot to talk about. If you guys haven't yet, there is a manga for Shin Kamen Rider that's out. It's focusing on Shocker. I've only gotten to see the first two chapters of it so far, but oh damn, oh shit, oh god, oh god, oh god, y'all need to go check that out. It's freaking cool because it's not just like, yeah, here's Shocker, and we're doing a bunch of Hideki Yano Shocker things. No, this dude found a way to bring in another character from Ishinomori's like library of dudes that don't get a lot of attention, plucked him straight out and found a place for him to be in the middle of Shin Kamen Rider's Shocker universe. So like, go check that out. If you just have to look at it raw, that's fine. Eventually you'll get to a character where you're like, wait a minute, I know that face because it's not a human face. Go check out that Shin Kamen Rider manga. That thing's damn good. Okay. Um, has anyone seen uh, Tentai Senshi Sun Red? I saw it years ago and funnily enough, I ran into a dude I met at a convention years ago, um, uh, Reese. And Reese, if you see this man, dude, thank you for saying something, man. I, I, it's been too long since I've seen people that I used to have fun with at convention. So like, dude, I, I missed I missed you. Thank you for reaching out. Um, yeah, he wants a Sun Red helmet. So I think I might try to produce one because I haven't seen one anywhere and it's not too difficult of a design. Like, there's no way I shouldn't be able to design Sun Red's helmet of all things. So I'll give it a chance. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, I also really like the Android Kikaider anime, but I know it tends to be too slow paced for a lot of folks. Okay, so uh, speaking of these anime that we are mentioning, specifically, uh, specifically these Ishinomori ones, there may or may not be a website of an, of an archive of some kind that belongs on the internet. I, I don't know what you would call an archive that you put on the internet, but uh, if that place existed, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of these older anime like uh, Cyborg 009, not just the 2000s version, but the 1960s version too. Go check that thing out. Go check out the older 70s one too, because that's like, ooh, it's good. But they also have uh, all the Android Kikaida stuff. But they also have Android Kikaida 01's anime up there as well, and the specials. Go check those out. Those are super, super cool. Um, 
If you're looking for another thing that's more, uh, like, fun, but it's, it's, it's tokusatsu, for sure it's a tokusatsu, but it's, it's not like uh, one of the mainstream ones. Uh, there are DVDs and Blu-rays of Zerum and Zerum 2. Zerum is, uh, is, is a really interesting set of movies from Keita and Mamiya. He's the guy that did Kamen Rider Zeto and also uh, Garo, all those things. So like, you know you're in for some really damn cool designs and a fun story. And uh, it's all about Ilya, who's like the, the lead heroine of it. And she's like, she's like, oh, God, like, I, I, what's the best way to describe her? other than just absolutely badass, but I don't want to just be like, absolutely badass, because that's so generic. She's like, imagine like 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 a, like a cyber, when I say cyber, I mean like inside the computer ninja, but she came out of the computer in order to fight cyber samurai guy who is literally unstoppable, but he's really just an armor suit that houses a snake with a geisha face and four titties. Yes, that's a thing that happens. That, 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 that is Zerum. Uh, but yeah, she, uh, Ilya fights Zerum, and you learn more about Zerum as she fights it. And then in the second movie, Zerum's like a Pokemon for her. And then like the Pokemon part that's controlling it stops and he starts doing his shit again. And she's like, ah, oh, we gotta do this again. And it's, they're cool movies. I really like them. Uh, and if you like Keita and Mamiya stuff and you want more Ishinomori love, he also did a, a movie in 1995 called um, Mechanical Violator uh, Hakaider. Uh, that just recently came out on Blu-ray again through Discotech, I think. I could be wrong. A anyways, I know it's come back out again recently. You might also be able to stream it. That's a really damn cool movie too. Um, he goes to a place called Jesus Town and he punches the walls and it bleeds. <laughs> Keita and Mamiya is crazy. I love his designs. I love what he thinks about for stories. He's one of those dudes where if I ever run into him, I definitely want to pick his brain for entirely too long. I, I want to be that guest where he's like talking to his handler like, I like that he knows all my stuff, but can you get him away from me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a Zerum anime, which is a prequel? I'll have to check that out. Ooh. Oh, and there's Tekaman and Tekaman Blade. Yeah, those are old ones. Those are um, Katsunoko anime stuff. God, that's a long, long time ago. Big stretch, but I would argue that the Nickelodeon cartoon El Tigre is very Tokusatsu and Lucha Libre inspired. So you had El Tigre, I had Mucha Lucha. <laughs> I mean, if we're bringing in goofy American cartoons, I'm gonna throw the goofy as heck double dragon cartoon and Mummy's Alive is a trip and a half. Oh my God. Okay, the double dragon cartoon is so stupid, but I had a toy from it back in the day. It was the blue one and his chest had like this clear, like, like green tattoo on it. And on his back was like, the sparker part from a cigarette lighter. So you just keep flipping and his chest would spark. And then the mask, like if you flip the thing too quickly, the mask would just vibrate and fall off. And I lost that thing years ago. But Mummy's Alive, I think I watched that show like two or three times and it's straight up like, oh no, ancient Egyptian trouble. What are we gonna do? They're called the Morphin Mighty, Mighty Morphin Mummies. And they straight up just show up and they're like, it's uh, uh, Captain Planet, go. And, and then Captain Planet shows up and gives them armor and then they fight and then one of them falls apart. And they're like, <laughs> and the episode ends. That's all I remember. I do remember some people really digging it though. Like some kids would like not shut up about it. And I'm like, yeah, but Power Rangers is right there. They have a titanium dude, dog. Like you hear what I'm saying? I need a new Garo series. I strongly agree. I want another Garo pretty damn bad. I was hoping that the VR Garo series would do better um, than it did. Uh, I didn't like it as much. I watched the whole thing and it just felt like I was waiting. The, the, the action they were doing was really, really damn cool, but I want to see Garo do Garo things for like more than two episodes, you know? Funny to think that the creators of Mummy Alive later directed the Kingdom Hearts pilot and the Eight Crazy Night. What the hell? That's a technical foul. Oh God, I forgot about Eight Crazy Nights. And then you had to remind me that Adam Sandler made a cartoon in the 90s. And you had to remind me that I got to go see it in theaters. <laughs> I went with a bunch of friends. It was his birthday. He wasn't Jewish, so it was, it was just strange. <laughs> oh, God. Oof. I am knackered. I am so tired, y'all. I think we might try to wrap it up here in a little bit, but if you've been hanging with me this whole stream, I greatly appreciate it. Y'all are awesome. Oh, my legs hurt. 
So um, let's talk about some stuff that's coming up. So then everyone's aware of what's going on. Uh, we're going to be just like a little bit. Oh, oh, hold on. Speaking of Kate and Amir, finally finished watching Shogeki Goraigon. And man, what a show went off deep in the end in the way that only he could make it. Uh, I haven't finished Shogeki Goraigon. I actually stopped when they got the third person. I still have all of it downloaded. I'm, I'm going to go finish that up because every person I hear says something about it is they always say something that's like right up my alley. Like, why haven't I finished watching this yet? So that's what I got to do. Shogeki Goraigon. If you're curious about what Shogeki Goraigon is, if Garo is Keita and Mamiya's common rider, but Shogeki Goraigon is Keita and Mamiya's Super Sentai. It's cool. It's super, super cool. Nyarko san has is another anime chock full of Toku references. Ooh. Okay. I'll have to go check that one out too. I'm going to add that to the list of shit I got to take a look at. All right. We're going to start wrapping it up. Your boy is tired. I'm, I'm practically leaning on the table to stay up and stay alive over here. Uh, what is happening in March? March, we are going to be kind of busy in the middle of the month. Uh, Katie and I are going to be taking our honeymoon. We're going to be out to Japan. We're going to be taking about a week and a half or two weeks out there. Uh, if I could stay longer, I will, but I probably won't stay as long as I usually do. Mostly just going so we can enjoy our honeymoon, see some friends we haven't seen in a very long time because of the COVID situation, and then uh, take my wife to a couple places I wanted to show her. Last time we were out there, I tried to take her to Mount Iofune so I could propose, and then typhoon. And they made it to where we couldn't go out there at all, and I was super bummed. I had to wait till like the day before my flight back out home to go and when I went it was like flooded it was it was it was a bust but the other thing too is we're gonna try to get back up to Ishinomaki for a day so I could go show her the Ishinomori manga museum and then we're gonna try and head west for a while and see some other friends and also go get some Sanki ramen out in Fukuoka because god damn it I'm so mad the Sanki that was right next to Eiji's house is gone oh it was so good it's so so good it's it's like it's like a, a chain ramen place but it's like it's a good chain ramen place I love Sanki Okay, what else is going on? So we are gonna try our damnedest to get the Ultraman video out before the end of March. I really wanna have the Ultraman mask done like as soon as possible. Um, I'm, I'm working on it with another actor and it's a cat. So like he's doing his best. There's only so much I can do with them every day because I'm trying to follow actual filming practices with animals. So uh, we're almost there. As soon as he finishes his last couple scenes, we're going to be flying on editing and it'll be all done. Um, I have like one more step I have to do with actually finishing the Ultraman mask. So like I just got to finish that too and edit or, or post in it. Um, more suit up will be out before the end of the year because while I've been working on this one, I've already started working on the next one as well. And we're going to be taking a step back towards Kamen Rider for a very brief period. And then we're going to go jump over and tackle some Sentai stuff for a while. Um, but the Sentai one, I'm going to be completely honest, it might not happen until December, January, or February of next year. But I'll try to get these done a little bit quicker. If I had more people here to help me like make these kind of things, like the actual like filming stuff, then yeah, like these would come out a lot faster. But I have to do my 3D printing business. I still have to do my video editing services. I still have to do all my other stuff I usually do. And I still got to make time for all of you and the regular uploads and all that other stuff. So I'm doing a lot. So if you feel like my content comes out a little bit too slow, know that I'm always working. And the reason why it's taking so long is because I have a lot I'm working on. But the only reason why I'm having so much to work on is because I want to make as much damn cool shit as I can. Because uh, that's all I want to do is just make cool shit. You dig? But if you've been bearing with me, thank you. You're pre you're Patience is beyond appreciated. You have no idea. And like the to the people that come out of the woodworks just be like, I love your stuff. Like, thank you. That's the that's the fuel that keeps me going. You got no idea. All right, so when we come back from Japan, um, that's when there should be a big like, all right, here's everything that's going on with Tamashi and what what's happening with the last end of it. Uh, that's also part of the reason why we're going out to Japan is to figure that out. So if I look generally like, hey, nothing's changed, then just assume that something happened and I'm just trying my best to roll the punches. If I seem extremely super chipper, then know that things are probably going to be coming out really, really fast. So I'm hoping for the ladder. Hoping for the ladder. <laughs> hoping for the ladder. And I want to talk about it. It's just one of those things where I just I don't want to shoot myself in the foot too soon, you know? So bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Oh, I think it's about time we wrap it up. So. 
If you haven't already, please, please, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification. It helps us out a lot. And if you hit the notification bell, it lets me know. You can also become a member. And if you become a member, we are going to be giving out more free goodies and some behind the scenes content. If you're excited about that Shin Ultraman suit up episode, or not Shin Ultraman, uh, just the Ultraman episode of suit up, I strongly suggest becoming a member. We have a preview of the re-edited intro for suit up re-edited intro yeah i made that intro in a style to where every single time it's the same intro but there's new stuff added to it so if you want to know what's going to be ahead of time go become a member go check that out if you want some patterns we have them over on patreon and there's some cool patterns over there go check those out too and if you haven't already go tell your mom you love her because she, she worked hard for you and if you can't tell your mom that you love her think about her today because she loves you too all right i hope you all have a great time this wonderful Sunday night. I hope you have a good week and I will see you again here at the next decade very, very soon. Appreciate every one of you. Have a great night, y'all. Later. Woo. Oh, I'm done talking.